This is Jocko Podcast number 355 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. So it was about 2009 or 2010, I think. And I'm in San Diego, and that year in San Diego, whatever year this was, the ADCC trials were in San Diego. So this is the championship of jujitsu, of submission grappling. And you have to do, you have to get qualified to go there. And they have a bunch of competitions all over the world. And the North American qualifier happened to be in San Diego. So I went, of course, and I brought my son with me. So I got my son with me. And, you know, he's like seven or eight years old. But, you know, he trains all the time. So he knows what's up. And they announce, you know, who's next up in this one mat. And they go, oh, next up is going to be some guy, blah, 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 some guy (laughs) versus Jeff Glover. Hmm. And I was like, I told my son, I looked at him, I go, hey, I go, this guy, we're going to that that mat to watch this guy, Jeff Glover. I said, he's crazy. And so we run over to that mat, we start watching, and sure enough, this guy, Jeff Glover, and I knew Jeff Glover because we started competing in jiu-jitsu around the same time. As a matter of fact, I have a... I have a, a sheet of paper that has the champions of like a grappling games or one of these old school, Joe Morier, one of these old school jiu-jitsu tournaments. Mm-hmm. And the first place winner of the white belts is Jeff Glover. The first place winner of the blue belts I, or sec, is me. And then Dean Lister is like the purple belt or something along oh, those yeah. lines, but it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyways, Jeff Glover comes out and what does he do? He like does donkey guard, which means he basically turns his back on his opponent, goes on all fours, runs at the dude backwards, Mm -hmm. and engages him, and then 14 seconds later, he's got the guy, and heel hook, and the guy taps. And my son, who again, he's like seven or eight years old, he looks at me and he goes, when you said he was crazy, I thought you meant crazy. (laughs) I didn't know you meant crazy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so that was it that was uh that was kind of a, a moment in, in that i really remember about jeff glover and then luckily for me and luckily for everyone in san diego jeff glover came down and actually taught jiu-jitsu at victory mma for five years for five years we had jeff glover here teaching uh jeff glover he ended up you know, he's done all kinds of stuff. He was the Pan Am champ 2005, the Pan Am champ 2006, 2007 Nogi world champion, 2008 Nogi silver medalist, 27 time champion of Grappler's Quest. Maybe it's more, I, it's but a lot. 27 times champion of Grappler's Quest. And we are uh, super stoked to have Jeff Glover here on the podcast to talk to us tonight. Jeff, what's happening? Thank you, Jocko. Thanks for nice. coming down. <laughs> also with him is Pete Letzos, which who you probably don't know. You probably don't know who Pete Letzos is, but that's okay. You might know who Pete the Greek is. Pete the Greek, another jujitsu jitsu legend. Uh, 1999 and 2000, Pan Am, third place as a blue belt. 2001, great Gracie Invitational Champion. 2002, Sao Paulo State Champion. 2003 Pan Am champion purple belt got his black belt in 2006 under the under the the Carlson Gracie side of the family and you know what that means Carlson Gracie jr. Uh, 2006 Pete the Greek opened his Academy up in Chicago he's he's famous in the jiu-jitsu world featured in the book the Gracie way he's Without a doubt the best wrist locker in the world making sure that the world is not ignoring that 5% of the body <laughs> Pete the Greek. Thanks for coming down, man. Hey, thank you, sir. <laughs> thanks, Echo. Uh, thanks, Jeff. So here we are two jujitsu legends in the house Nice for me. You know, I love jujitsu. I love jujitsu And so it's nice for me to come in here and, and just be able to talk about jujitsu But let's talk about you guys and and how you guys got started in the game uh, Jeff so so tell us a little bit like where'd you grow up what'd your parents what'd your parents do uh my mom was a nurse and my dad had all kinds of different jobs and they uh ended up in santa barbara 
which is where I found jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Like 16, I started. You were 16 when yeah. you started. And everyone thought I was like 12. Yeah, because you still look like you're 16 <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Very beautiful <laughs> face. Thank you. Yeah, what, 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 how'd you get to the gym? What happened? Um, well, <clears throat> Frangia actually uh, moved next door to my mom's house. Him and his whole Brazilian family. Oh. There's like 12 of them. Bro. They all moved into a house together. and um, Like next door neighbors? Yeah, like right there. The, the same block that Bill Cooper lived on. <sighs> and uh, Bill wasn't even in the scene yet, but he lived in that neighborhood and was one of the kids. But uh, yeah, Frangia. So then what, he came over and was like, you need to learn how to fight, boy? I went over there to make friends, you know, and knocked on their door. That's kind of how it was in that neighborhood, you know, like. It was a nice spot. It was a nice place to live. And uh, yeah, I knocked on the door. He opened the door and like he had a TV playing UFC in the background. <laughs> what like, year is this? I mean, this was like 1998. Okay. Yeah. 1998 or nine. And um, yeah, it was just super crazy. Like he had, you know, the cauliflower, the shaved head. It's intimidating. You know, the, you remember the first time you saw a really good grappler and the, the way they're the way their head just kind of looks <laughs> different, you know, and the ears. And you're like, how did that happen? <laughs> and, um, so did he say, um, like, I teach jujitsu? You're like, what is that, karate? Like, I don't want to do karate. That looks, you know, kind of I mean, lame. I didn't understand a word he said for the first six months. Okay. All I knew is he was just very persuasive and was pulling and pushing me places. And I found myself on a mat with people trying to choke me. And it was awesome. And then how, how long was it before you were, like, in the academy taking classes? <clears throat> like the first week, that first week, after that first week, I like told him, I was like, dude, I want to do what you do. How do, how long did it, t did you realize the power of jujitsu immediately? Were you just like, why is this happening? Whoa. It didn't really, it didn't like dawn on me. It was, none of that, none of that profound stuff was dawning on me. It was just so cool to have this like mentor guy telling me what to do. That was like telling me to do push ups and yelling at me. Like, you know, he would kick me if I didn't do the calisthenics work he wanted me to do. You know, like I'd never had that in my life. And I was like, I didn't care what it was doing. If that, if that dude was jumping off bridges, I would have jumped off bridges. But that dude did jujitsu tournaments on the weekend and push-ups during the week. So that's, you know, it was just really nice, yeah. Did he open that academy immediately? This is, by the way, if anybody wants to know, this is Paragon Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah. This is, uh, this yeah. is Ricardo Frangia Miller. Yeah. like epic instructor and you know obviously he has Jeff Glover under him has Bill Cooper under him has the other Glover yeah. under him Tyrone Glover. Tyrone Glover so he's made a bunch of just incredible uh, jiu-jitsu people yeah he's still up there at Paragon yeah he has a big empire that he runs and operates out of uh, Ventura and all over my my Central middle coast. my middle daughter is now part of the Paragon Empire because right. she goes to slow. Yeah, Chris Lovato. He yep. was he was one of the first guys that came into Frangia's jujitsu world with like really good wrestling. Uh, and I used to fight Chris Lovato when I was like 17, 16, 17, 18. I would that was like one of the first like men Frangia would let me like fight. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And I got some good work out of that dude. <laughs> is that where you started developing good wrestling? Yeah, him and Tyrone, you know, Tyrone came in, was like, all right, all these Brazilian names, all these judo names that you have for these takedowns, there's wrestling names for those too, you know? That's like a I, double leg. That's, that's, called, that's not called Bayana, right? Isn't that what they called it? <laughs> that's not called Bayana, that's called double leg, you know? And he's like, and you, and you change levels when you do it too. You don't just like, bah, bend over and grab it, like there's, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was it. I started wrestling early, early, early. Yeah. 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 Your wrestling is is like underrated, right? Because people, you're so fluid on the mat that yeah. people might not recognize that. And yeah. your your freaking creativity on the mat is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And we'll get into like where that came from. But before, Pete. Yes, sir. How'd it go down? Well, well, well first of all, you're from Chi-Town, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. What's going on? So Where are you from? My dad, my dad owned uh, hot dog places. My dad was the first one to have a Euros in Chicago, so he'd put it on the spit. And Dang. and we basically would flip restaurants. We'd flip hot dog places. Well, they're not little stands. They're just little, like across the street at the malt shop. So it's basically mm -hmm. like those type of places, a little bit smaller. Yep. And... Um, 
So my dad would, we'd go and find a place, you know, we're Greek, we'd, we'd find someone struggling that, that could, they'd open them, not know how to do it, and we'd just take it over and flip it. You could either flip it in a few months, maybe a few years, but one that we kept was called Kings and Queens, and uh, that was in Berwyn, which is right next to Chicago, it's right on the border, and um, there was a karate place next to it, so my dad, my dad's tough, he's from Greece, uh, his parents left him at 13 years old. He took care of himself since 13. They brought him to the United States at World War II. As soon as that was over, he was born in that uh, in that time, so he's like born in 1942. They brought him over, and his dad's like, you know what, I'm out. And he left, and has left him. And so then he made it to Chicago, and he's a tough guy, so he always wanted like, but he worked hard, so he never really worked out. He's like, I never worked out, I just worked. And the karate place next to the, to the place and my dad got his black belt and he would just do private lessons with like the master and all that and so my dad would train me when I was born he had me like at 40 years old and so he'd be on his knees and fight me all the time and, and make me tough and I don't know where he learned that but it was like war training so <laughs> so so I started doing that and then um I went to the karate place but I didn't like it I would just show up for the belt promotion I'm like oh these kids are getting promoted I'll fight them and then like they'd get promoted, but they have to fight me. And <laughs> the guy's like, "Look, man, you can't come back. You know, you have to come to class." And um, I was good at floor hockey and baseball and stuff. And I found out that my cousin was like the best ice hockey player. His name's Chris Chelios. He's one of the best ones. He's in the NHL. He lived in San Diego. And um, one of the kids uh, was getting bullied, so the dad's like, no, no, you, we're gonna teach you. And so they brought me on their ice hockey team and I beat up the bully day one. I was never that big, but I, I was ready to fight people for my friends. <laughs> and uh, and so He's bam. still ready to fight no, people it, for his no, friends. <laughs> no, but it's not like, it, 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 Glover likes me. <laughs> like, I really don't have to fight anyone, but it's just, it's fun, it, it keeps you strong and so the next thing, <laughs> what happened next? So um, what did you do? So I did, they brought me to ice hockey. Mm -hmm. So then ice hockey was cool, but I never really wanted to play ice hockey. They just want me there to beat up the bullies. So, so then bam, I saw UFC. It was like 1993 with my mom. I live with my mom growing up. My dad went back to Greece, and uh, I'm like, I want to do. That. I looked at my mom. I said, That's what I want to do. And she looked at me. He's like, "That's what you should do." And then I was <laughs> That's like, "The only mom in history." <laughs> I, was I was like, like "This that is looks good. perfect." So we just watch it. And um, we moved around, so I went to a few high schools. The last high school I went to, because um, we was called Montini, and, and they were really strong wrestling programs. So you see, like John Jones' wrestling coaches from there. They have like Izzy wrestling. All these kids are top-notch wrestlers, and so I would go to wrestling rooms and fight them pretty much. I was like 14, 15. and I was able to do well against all of them, but I would never wrestle because it was ice hockey season. So then finally one says, one of the Gracies moved in town and I couldn't drive yet. So then um, my mom's like, yeah, my mom had a heart attack he when I was 14. still can't drive. So <laughs> my mom had a heart attack at 14, so I just took the car, went to the Gracies, and I met Carlson Gracie Jr. I'm like, whoa, I'm like, this is this guy is like, he's one of them. And then he didn't like to drive, so I became his personal driver. And then when I would drive him, people want to kick my butt because I show up at the coach, you know, I'm always with them. And then that's when I met Carlson. Carlson would bring Vitor and everyone. I was so happy. I didn't even know there were jiu-jitsu tournaments. I just thought there was pride fighting and UFC. And then, should I join? I just became one of them. I became their driver. Just drove them everywhere. And then eventually... Eventually you went to Brazil, right? Yeah, eventually. How far along was that? Wait, like so then um, there's a tournament going on. I lived in Ohio, so Carlson Gracie Jr. He was my best friend. He lived with me, and he lived with me and my mom in Chicago. He lived alone, but you can't move from Rio de Janeiro to Chicago. Like it's depressing. <laughs> so like, I'm knocking on his door because my job was to pick him up and take him to class. Like people still have that. Like a lot of jiu-jitsu coaches, they love to have their students come, pick him up, hang out, and take him to class. So I'm knocking on the door, and he's not answering. I kicked the door down. I'm like, look. Come live with me and my mom. And then he lived with me, and I started getting really serious about jiu-jitsu. I was about 16 at that point. What year was that? Around 96, so, somewhere around there, 96, 97. So now you're training freaking hard. Hard. So I'm his driver. I show up to every single class. It's um, Carlson Gracie team. So we always have people from Brazil. 
Carlson Gracie always come visit us because O'Hare Airport's international. Mm-hmm. So before things were different, they could stop. Well, I think they can still do that. But whenever they would go to Brazil, wherever they'd always bring their team and stop in Chicago and visit his son, and I would fight them. And I didn't even know there were tournaments existed. I'm like, whoa, these these guys make a lot of money. Like no one on my team was broke. You just seen Vitor come and eating metrics package, packages. <laughs> he didn't even eat food. I was like, mom, I want to be like this guy. My dad looked at him. He's like, oh, my dad didn't understand so much because I didn't live with him, but um. My mom understood that's what I wanted to do. And so 110% behind me. And I never really had to pay for training because when you train like the way Jeff and I do, like first we start off cleaning them. First we start off usually as like training dummies. We help with privates. We help with everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God bless all that. And I start training. Shoot, I end up in Brazil. Next thing you know, I tell, I'm at the tournament in Ohio. Mm-hmm. So it's my first day as a purple belt. I should go as a blue belt. And Carlson Gray Jr. says, look, you're going as a purple belt tomorrow. I'm like, oh, yeah. I show up there, and um, I smash everyone. I do a couple over-under moves, and, like, I smash a lot of pressure. I beat everyone. And then a guy comes out of the out of the crowd. His name is Henry Metamoros. He, he's back in the day. He he fought uh, Rafael Cadero and, and the old uh, Valley Tudo things. Mm-hmm. And he comes out, and he's like, I want to go against you because I beat a Pedro Sauer guy. He's from Pedro Sauer. <laughs> and then, this bam. This I'm like, is I'm like come on, let's do it. Be, homie. And then I, I beat him. Boom. And then on um, the whole How many crop, hours a day were you training? No, all day. I would just pick them up. I was just there. Mm-hmm. Jeff. He's a lifer. Jeff, how many hours a day no, were you day. training once you started training? There's no hours. Not as much as Pete. Yeah, right. No way. He came after. Jeff came after because I met on the mat people in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And they, Scotty and them. Yep. And then so I had to train that hard because I wasn't accepted. My, my team destroyed it, fell apart. And so then I met Scotty, and Scotty had all the information. He had the digital Okay, cameras. so hold on. You got, you got Carlson Gracie team. Because a bunch of people left to make Brazilian top team, right? So I'm in this tournament in Ohio, and the coaches, uh, the the referees, Cristiano Marcelo. He had, he's like the guy from Grace You Might Tot, and he go and he was coaching shootbox. And he goes, tells the Carlos Junior Jr. If this guy, if he moves to Brazil, no one will be able to beat him. So then they, they said that about you. Yeah, it, he was the ref when I when I won that, and so then bam, I say to. I say to Junior, I say, I need to go to Brazil, dude. And he's like, sure. He's like, perfect. He calls his mom, and I show up there with my backpack. And I'm like, well, What did you tell your mom? I said, I'm going to – my mom was happy. She How old are it. you? I'm about 20. Okay. My mom was happy. And what year is this? It's around 2000. Check. Okay. So I go up, show up there, and I'm and Junior is like my brother, Carlson Gracie Jr., he lived with me and stuff. We're like close, like real close, like me and Jeff. The mom never met me. She and she just gave me. I was like Peach, because my name in Portuguese is like a dog, like Pitbull. P I D Peach. She gives me a hug. <laughs> I give her a hug. We didn't know any. I couldn't understand anything. I knew some swear words, but um. <laughs> so I show up. She works at the gym. Carlson's wife work at the gym. Forty five. This is jujitsu crazy. Yeah. So I walk over. They take me everywhere. Like, this is Peach. You know, don't mess with them and. We meet all the bikers. They have all types of, you know, mutual friends that they know. They say, "Don't, you know, this is Pete." And shoot, I was like, it was great. It, and and then, um, yeah, but I showed up to the gym and like the third day, they asked me to teach class because the team fell apart. And I was like, whoa, I'm like I didn't come here for this. So then I tell Carlson, I'm like, look, like I want to train hard because they only had a few guys left. Most of the guys that stay left, some were like the loyal guys, but some are the guys that no one wanted. Mm-hmm. It's like they didn't go with them because no one wanted them. So I was like, whoa. I'm like, I can't stay here. So, so did you feel like it was like a political scenario? It was like a war. It was like show up to a war after your team just got massacred, and you're just like there like, whoa. <laughs> so you, what, what, what was it that made you not want there was one guy there. There was a few left. Like that. So were really was it tough. that all the good guys left? They all left. There was like two or three of us left. Mm-hmm. One of them was so tough. He was a biker, a biker guy. I think he was like in the Hell's Angels or something. He, um, yeah, for sure he was. He went back to Brazilian top team to beat all them up and take them back. Like he was hectic, and he was doing a great job of doing that. But he got in trouble, and 
I don't know what happened to him, but he was actually doing it. He had one guy at the end willing to go there and beat them all up and take them back, and he was doing a good job of that, but didn't work out. <laughs> Things like that. Dude, out of context, <laughs> that whole the whole idea of like one guy going to another place beating people well, up I didn't and taking know, them back. I didn't know that. Hell cause, yeah. Because Carlson's best friend was named Street Pocket. Rules, son. His name is Pocket Tot. Oh, actually, I went through it with Scotty. Scotty's like the American guy over there that films everything. Everyone loves him. But Scotty always has money around. So I show up to the Brazilian top team with Scotty one day. And it was like an enemy territory. I was like, whoa. I'm like, I saw all these guys. It was in the... Brazil, Bank of Brazil. Laborio has also worked for Bank of Brazil. So he hooked them up with, they had a country club where they trained. It was badass. Like I walked in there, I was like, whoa, there's like 80, 100 people. You seem like, I was like, whoa. And then the guy, Navaliada, he was the guy with the tattoos, my best friend there. <laughs> well, because he was the last one left. He comes up and right away, I'm in there. He stops the whole train. Because these guys are trying to sell us stuff. I'm with a bunch of American dudes and the little guys like uh, from top teams like, oh, buy this, buy that. I'm like, what? I'm not buying buy no top team, nothing. And then now they ask he's me, Pete's here. He's the only brother in the room that'll fight with me against all you guys. He's like soon <laughs> everyone will come back to the Carlson Racing team. It got hectic in there. I was like, yeah. And then he's like, don't worry, Pete. I'm like, all right. And we just stood there. And that was when I went to the top team and then it was never the same after that. Um, I could never join them. So I went to all the other schools. Carl said, look, I know you went there. <laughs> he said, you can't go there again. You can go anywhere else. So then I went to every other team. I showed up Gracie Baja, I trained, I lived in Oswaldo Owls. I trained at Ted a day. I went to every other gym. No one really liked me, but they respected Carlson. Like you'd hear like gringo. I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm trying to hear gringo, I'm like, all right. <laughs> The cross and Gracie. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know any Portuguese, but I knew that. That's what I mean. It's about to get heated. And so Scotty, like, was people was every school you went to, everyone tried to murder you. Yeah. And so Scotty, Scotty took all the videos of everything, and then like that's when Glover is being built at that point. This is when Scotty's making videos like Ringworm and all Everything, them videos. All the stuff. Yeah, Dang Fever. I was, oh, that's right. Dang Scotty got fever, to make yeah. the videos because of me, because Carlson's best friend was Pakita. He was the guy that filmed, like Carlson's best friend. He's like, hey, what should you do? You should film. So Pakita filmed everything. So then they showed up to the house. They're like, we don't like your friend Scotty. He films everything. He's making all this. You can't just show up to Brazil and film everyone. And make all <laughs> like, we don't like him. They don't like when you do that here, let alone yeah, there. Yeah, so Scotty's well, Especially, especially back in the day, dude. Because oh, back in the day, it wasn't like now. You know, you can go on BJJ Fanatics and just get, like, the best moves of anyone because they're, you know, you can go buy them. No. But back in the day, you couldn't buy the best moves from anyone because it was a secret inside that academy. No, because it's hectic because Scotty was from Health Gracie. Health made them nervous. Health still makes people a little nervous. <laughs> but they didn't really care. They're like, you know, Scotty, the Scotty guy got to go. And I'm like, they're like, what do you think of him? In Brazil, they talk like that. They talk like family. Like, what do you think of Scotty? I'm like, Scotty's like my brother. And then they look at Paquita. What do you think of Scotty? He's like, Scotty's like my son. Oh, so, dang. bam, Scotty got to film everything. At that point in time, dude, I remember those movies back in the day. They so Scotty, like, everything they were, they were like point, gold. Yeah. At that point in time, they're like they're telling about this Glover guy. I'm hearing about these guys back in the United States. I didn't give a shit. I was like, no way. I'm in Brazil. I'm here. Like, oh, I don't care about anyone over there. I'm like, I'm. I was there on one thing. It was just to smash and like and do whatever I needed to do, just to. I was the only one left on my team. <laughs> And so uh, Glover, Glover was able to like, Scotty had a big part in Glover, I'll guarantee you. Like, he's not gonna tell you that, well he will tell you that. Like, Fran Jr. for sure, but Scotty have give you access to things that like. Not just me though, like. Not just him. So the Scotty that we're talking about. Scotty puts no us all idea together. That we're talking he about. a whole hospital. Yeah, Scotty, but back in the, yeah, now he has a hospital, what's the name of the hospital in Mexico? Chipsa. 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 Yeah. So he's doing a bunch of great work. Uh, Helping people with stem cells. If you're interested in that, you can fly into San Diego and go down across and, the border. But this is Tijuana. way before. This is that. way before. This is, dude. This is. I mean, when I met those guys, ago. yeah, when I met those guys, they were living in like a yeah. like a 
broken down oh, yeah. loft up in San Francisco. Me and Dean List go up there for, you know, to go out, hang out, train but and Scotty whatnot. Scotty was the coolest person at that point. Maybe one of the coolest people in, in America as far as bringing people together and showing them a good time. Like, because not too many people were able to do that. How is he going to bring all these people, right? Glover, what do you think? From all shapes of life. You're crushing it, Pete. Keep going. <laughs> so, what, what, so when did you meet Scotty then, Jeffy? I mean, early. He he was already sponsoring Tyrone, and Tyrone was like, "You should look at my little white brother." <laughs> and Scotty was like, "Yeah, he's awesome." And then as a blue belt, I had an OTM patch on my gi, and you know, you, so you started competing as a white belt. You just started getting in there, and you were you were so you must have been like sixteen, seventeen years old when you started competing. Yeah, I think the first one I did was uh, seventeen. Yeah. There's something about you though. Like the whole time that you've been doing jujitsu, you've been doing things that other people weren't doing. You've been doing things that, at least as far as I know, it's kind of it's similar to Dean Lister. Like my my brother Dean, you know, he was doing things that li- literally people were not doing, and you're the same way as a white belt. I don't I don't know that early on I was like that. I think I was doing. Good, I would think I was doing jujitsu right, mm-hmm. and just with really good motor skills and amazing balance, and it was just normal jujitsu, but <sighs> done in a way that looks different. You know, yeah, it's like it does. Dean was actually doing different things. Dean was doing things that were like illegal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. taking the back, doing triangles, doing yeah. bow and arrow chokes. You know, I was I was you know doing no, attacks from I the guess, guard. I guess you're right because now that I think about it a little bit more. Uh, you were doing normal stuff, but damn, you're doing it in an abnormal way. Because even today, you can go watch your videos from when you were a white belt or a blue belt, and you're like, that does not look like normal jujitsu. The fluidity of your movement. And you know, you were teaching class yesterday, and you were going through this thing where you're like, hey, just sit here and bounce back and forth. And now, and you're just talking about shadow wrestling. And so I'm sitting there, like, just doing what I'm told, like, okay, we're bouncing back and forth. And then you're saying like, hit a single, hit a double. And then you're like, all right, stay in your square, but stay in your square, but now get get it da- get down in half guard, get that deep half guard. And you're doing this shadow, like there's no other people. And I'm watching you do it and I was like, damn, I'm a loser. I am such a loser because I can see that you're getting better with no partner, just doing the moves, doing the movements. Your brain is just tapped into going through and making it happen and I was like, God, I'm such a loser. And you're literally saying like, this is how you can get better. This is how you get, I'm thinking, God, I'm an idiot. How did I not be doing this for all these years? Uh, Going back to the story though, you started competing, you started kicking ass really early. I mean, you were freaking, you came onto the scene in a fury. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for my against my peers, I always did really well. Hey, how many hours a day? You're you're like, oh, P train more. You must have been training freaking I mean, tr- training, like, I think when people say training, they mean, like, rolling. Oh, I mean, on the mats. I like, mean, I was assisting in every class. All of Frangia's private classes, his women's self-defense classes, his little kids' classes. That's what I would do. How, how long a day, how many hours a day were you at the academy? I mean, it was like, if I missed more than two classes, the whole, like, free jujitsu <laughs> thing was over. You so know, you're, you're, you're doing five classes a day, four classes a day? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. But I didn't roll. No, you're not going to roll every single class. But that's the thing. And I noticed this is another thing about you. You have a way of rolling that is, it's not rolling fully, but it's rolling. It's like a playful roll where you're going through wild positions and crazy things are happening. And that's another thing. And you know, it's, I used to watch you do this when you taught here and I'd be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I kind of thought of it as like a cool thing. And then I just realized when you were here and I was watching, actually I was watching you and Pete roll and I was like, oh, this is how this bastard's getting so good because he's trying all this wild stuff against a partner that he's kind of playing with, they're playing together. Yeah. And that's a different thing. And I remember that actually, Dean and I used to do that. Dean and I would do that where we're sort of going, but we're also kind of just playing, but if it's gonna work, you can kind of tell that it's gonna work, and if it's not gonna work, you can tell it's not gonna work, but you don't get all locked up in one position and sit there across the side for 48 minutes, yeah. you, which yeah. is not much You progress. have to play before you can fight. It's like in boxing. A, a boxing coach won't hold pads for you unless you're good at shadow boxing and bag work first, because mm-hmm. you're gonna fucking hit them. 
You know, <laughs> you know you're going to hurt them. As a jujitsu coach, I don't want to work with a jujitsu student that doesn't have a good stance. Mm-hmm. I'm like, let me see your stance. And they're like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm like, whoa, you're not, I, I'm not rolling with that dude. He's going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. And if I roll with him, I'm going to only, only win. There's no like letting this dude get anything because he's going to do it wrong and hurt me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I start feeling bad because I'm just breaking some dude off like as hard as I can. And he's all <laughs> brand new. <laughs> and he doesn't understand. I'm just trying not to get hurt. Yeah. Well, that was uh, another interesting thing you told me one time. You said, hey, for me, the easiest people for me, Jeff Glover, to go against is like big muscle guys. And I, I witnessed that countless times where like some big jacked guy would come in here and you could see you know whatever he's thinking he's hanging on to is not there anymore like a half a second later it's gone you're all of a sudden slipping over there slipping over there mm-hmm. um how about your flexibility bro you got some wild flexibility how much of that is natural and how much of it is work i mean it's all natural i don't stretch never stretched no god <laughs> that's crazy you ever see me stretch, Pete? No. He just like does like freak show stretches, just to show people like he'll twist his ankles around. Yeah. But as far as like going out there and doing a like, yoga, we went to like meet some chicks one time or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was, <laughs> how, do, how was it? Did no, I mean right? like, he was more flexible than everyone. Like it's we're not falling like, for that again. <laughs> no, so you know Glover's one of those people. You know, I, if you tell someone, you know, not to use their strength. But then I tell them not to use their flexibility. So then, you know, we all have talents that we should. But yeah, the way Glover and I play is, uh, we trust warm, Pete. we're I warming trust each other dude, up. You know? mm-hmm. We warm each other up in case we really have to do something. As far most people see, we're expecting to be rolling, and then some dude wants to challenge us. So we're warming ourselves up at all times, as opposed to hurting each other. And then someone walks in the room, and then what? Yep. Then we're already hurt. Like the way we play, he's getting sharper, I'm getting sharper. And then if we really got to do it, then we do it. Mm-hmm. We're sharpening these things pretty much. We're not, we're not putting in battle because we already know what it could do. But we'll keep it sharp. This thing's pretty sharp. No, that one's not sharp at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, Jeff, you're saying, uh, you know, white belt, blue belt, you're kind of doing – normal jiu-jitsu moves you're just doing them super fluid and again anybody go watch youtube or whatever and check out some of the stuff well what's the first thing you remember kind of kind of thinking hey i'm making this up this is new like i i'm creating this thing right now i don't know that i did it intentionally it would be uh, somebody else pointing it out to me and be like hey did you notice you did this when you rolled and i'd be like no i have no idea what just happened I was just, you know, responding to all the training that Fringia put me through, mm-hmm. and it would just work, you know. Your uh, deep half guard is that? I mean, you're definitely known for the deep half guard, especially back in the day. W- do you was that something that you were like all of a sudden you realized you had this position? I, rem- I remember you teaching me deep half guard, and the coolest thing was you you do deep half guard to me. And you just like sort of pose the question like, what are, what are you going to do, Jocko? Because you're 225 pounds and where are you going to go? And you have, you have control of my leg. It's like your whole body is on my leg, but then I can't do anything. Yeah. Was the deep half guard, is that, was that the first thing that you started getting recognized for? As like your own thing? It was our team's thing. Frangia used mm-hmm. it just as much as I did. So did Bill, so did Tyrone. Anybody who was winning tournaments from Paragon team was using that fucking suite. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, I think what I did was I recognized that all the sweeps are not just randomly used. It works best when you have an initial off-balancing movement. Mm-hmm. And I realized at that point that I was doing that. I was going into deep half guard and just trying random moves and hoping they would work. And often they would. They would oftentimes work. I would be like, let me try this random move. And boom, the guy would get swept. I'm like, oh, cool. And, and then would you load that into your repertoire? Yeah. Of like, I mean, okay, you know, now I got another sweep. Well, well I, I, dude, it's, I had the light bulb when I realized it was only three sweeps. I thought that it was like 15, 20 different things I had to learn. When I found out that, oh my God, I keep repeating these three things over and over again. And it took me so long 
I used to do like three months. I would, it would focus on three months on one move. Every time I rolled with somebody, I was only doing Amo Plata for three months. And at the end of three months, I was, I was freaking, I hated that move. <laughs> I felt like a cheater if I was, I was so good at it mm-hmm. that it's, it wasn't fun anymore. You know what I'm saying? When, when you got a move that just works for you so well, you feel like you're cheating. You know, doing it to white belts, you're like, what? <laughs> How good do I really feel about that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm setting the bar higher for myself. So it didn't get like that with Deep Half Guard. It got to like year three and four, and I was still like excited to use it every time I rolled, and, and it was making life so easy. And you started seeing the clarity and the simplicity actually get narrowed down over time because you That's thought right. Deep right. Half Guard was so many different moves, yeah. but really you can sweep them to the left, you can sweep them to the right, or you can come out the back. That's yeah. kind of what it is, right? Basically, yeah. It's always gonna be one, a variation of one of three moves, yeah. And they all set each other up. They're all, yeah. There's a, whole, all. there's a whole thing that's really easy to learn. You know, if I can grab your leg, I can show it to you and explain it to you in like five minutes. And most guard systems do not take five minutes to explain. Mm-hmm. Most guard systems, you need like two hours. And I can honestly give you the gist of this system in like under 10. Mm-hmm. No, it's- Pete explains it better than I do, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's one of those things that when, I, when, you, when you were teaching here and I was like, oh, this stuff is, it's crazy how it is pretty simple. I mean, when you, you were already to the point when you came here, I mean, you were a freaking champion and everything else. So you were not only highly proficient at the move, you're also highly proficient at teaching it. And all the little drills. It's another thing that Jeff Glover has. Drills. Little physical drills mm-hmm. that make you better at the movement, that make you better at jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Motor skills. Somebody said that to me the other, other day. Yeah. They're like, Glover, you got motor skills. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what, does that, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. I said that to you the other day when you Is were that teaching. You? Yeah, no, that what I said was, I feel like if Jeff Glover's watching me try to do one of his moves, he just thinks this guy's an idiot. <laughs> like, like this guy doesn't doesn't have any motor skills. Uh, so you, you're in this competition mode. So now we're talking like, what is it now? Not t- the year 2000, 2001. Now you're competing all the time. 2002, 2003. You're mopping up competitions. The other thing that's rad about Jeff Glover is uh, what's Jeff Glover's weight class? Whatever. <laughs> Dude, all those old like grappling quest videos where you're going in against guys that are 300 pounds, literally 300 pounds, 240 pounds, jacked big giant dudes. What was the story behind that? You just didn't give a shit? Deep half garden. Deep half garden. The bigger they get, the more I use the deep half garden. Yeah, come out the back door. Yeah. No up problem. on the single. Or up on yeah. any of them. Oh, they all work really well. <laughs> See, if not, when you're caught in that quarter guard position, when someone's trying to mount you, you, if you look at the last ADCC with the, with the super fight of Gordon versus Galvan, Gordon had him trapped in the quarter guard, so Galvan had two options, or three. He could either accept the mount, turn stomach down, give the choke, or he could have went and did Jeff Glover right there and dive under the leg and went deep half guard. Mm-hmm. That's something you got to be kind of crazy to do. It's, it's the deep half. The way I teach the deep half guard, you'll never get mounted again. You don't get mounted and you don't get your back taken. It's the anti-mount pretty it's, much. It's anti this. Here's how jujitsu used to be when we all first started, okay? Mm-hmm. It used to be you go from closed guard to mount. Mm-hmm. There's none of this like knee slide to side control shit first. It was go from closed guard to mount. And when dudes are good at that, it fucking sucks. Yeah, that's right? what Roger Gracie does. And that's BJ what Gordon's Penn. so good at that now. He's so good at just going straight to mount, dude. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I used to have to defend with Frangia all the time. And Frangia gave up on trying to tell students to do that shit. Cause everybody on the grappling scene, they were all like, oh, knee slide to side mount, friends. He was like, that's whack, go to mount. And people were like, that, but that's harder. And he's like, yeah, at first it's harder, but the end results, dog, you get a mount where the submission is just right there now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a checkmate type mount. And he was like, whatever, nobody wants to listen to me. And we are the whole community, we were all like, knee slice, knee slice. And now <laughs> Gordon's showing you guys, fuck knee slice, mount. Yeah, right? It's constant so, pressure. So this deep half guard is, is designed to deal with that shit. To get under that mount to deal with that shit right there. Mm-hmm. That's how Glover is able to beat these big guys because he can either stay there and get trapped and mounted or he can dive under. And diving under is scary mm-hmm. because they're right above you. And if you don't know what you're doing right there, most people try it and then they, they kind of get, uh, was it claustrophobic, right? Yeah. They yeah. get claustrophobic and bail on and they it. They panic and they bail. They yeah. panic. And they're and like, they it doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
Yeah. Well, that's another thing you and I were talking about the other day, Jeff, is when you first try a move in jiu-jitsu, it's not going to work. I mean, it may work like 10% of the time, but it's the same thing with anything in life. When you incorporate something new into your life, if you're working at a, at a business and you incorporate some new process, at first, it's going to be less efficient. That's the way it works. So you're going to, no one knows exactly how to do the process so everyone's kind of messing it up and they're taking a little longer and so you're gonna get less efficient when you first start trying a new process in a business same thing in jiu-jitsu you bring some new move into jiu-jitsu it's gonna it's gonna make you worse for a while and i said for a while you were like three months because you were teaching a whole nother series the other day and i was i said to you i'm like bro i'm gonna get my back taken a lot when i start doing this and you go yeah you are and I was like, yeah, cool. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. And I got done. I was rolling. And I was like, hey, I got my back, back taken. And you were like, yeah, you're going to keep getting your back taken for a while. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was a position I used to teach. And and I would teach it to people. And for me, it was like my main go-to position of how to pass guard. It was like kind of unstoppable. And I would teach it to people. And then I'd see them try and do it. They'd be all awkward and all off balance and stuff. And I would say to them, They'd be like, I feel like I'm gonna get swept, and they they would get swept. And I'd say, hey man, you gotta get comfortable in this position first. Like it's gonna take you a while to get to where you can just be here and just be like, no, nothing's gonna happen. You can't triangle me, you can't arm lock me, you can't sweep me. I'm totally comfortable here, and I'm gonna pass your guard. But it but it takes a while to get used to that stuff. In order to do that, you gotta put your ego in check. I remember watching you, Jeff, roll. You like people are just getting. You're just giving up a rear naked choke. 80% 80% of the time you get out. 20% of the time you tap. And you're like, cool, let's roll again. Yeah, well, I was getting paid in those classes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that, if you're not doing that, you're not going to improve. Yeah, I don't, you know, I like, I like making the students truly believe they got coach. You know, mm-hmm. like, like, like they, they go home and they're like, tonight. <laughs> they're like I swear to god I tapped coach today no he legit like tapped hard and everything and he was struggling <laughs> grunting and I don't take time to explain to them whatever they want to ask did I really get you I'll be like well you know I'll explain it to them but if they don't ask I let them go home I'm not going to be like I let you by the way I let you get that by the way <laughs> just so you know like yeah. I'm like nah dude, good job today dude you, got you coach, try to you know? match their energy almost yeah match, match their heartbeat mm-hmm if they start going harder, we start going harder. All right, so when, when did you, so what, what was like the highlight of your competition career, Pete? Well then, well, okay, so let's see. Besides Rafael Lovato and, and myself, there wasn't too many Americans pretty much going to, Rafael would come out and visit all the time. His dad was cool. He'd, he wouldn't live to, in Brazil, but he'd come out and so, he, him and I were able to do well out there. Mm-hmm. And so they put us in the great kid peligro. We would usually get ripped off in tournaments. Like we would, <laughs> I would compete more than him, but the Brazilians liked us because we would get ripped off. There was no internet so much. And you know, like uh, the last time I competed in Brazil was against Braulio Stima. And it was like at my fifth match of the world and I should have won. But then they, they gave him a timeout. They called the referee. He brought over an oxygen tank right after a deep half guard swept them. I dumped him. Then they called a timeout. They brought him all the oxygen. They put him in his best move. I didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Carlson came out. He made the switch to ref. He threw out uh, one, of the, one of his cousins, the referee. And then and it was, a, it was a, you just realize, like, in these type of <laughs> games, you could get cheated. They especially fed him the, some acai. <laughs> the, in, the, in the tournament, basically, we didn't... In those tournaments back in the day, you'd just stuff someone in a position you were good at, and the time would run out, mm. and you'd win. That's how... I wouldn't have the flashy wins, because I would beat people that I wasn't supposed to beat. I would go to Brazil and beat all those guys, and they would never expect that. And I don't even remember most of their names, but there was a lot of good ones, and mm. all the Brazilians knew me. And then when I came back to Chicago, Carlson had moved to Chicago, but the level was low because in Chicago, yeah, but it was just like regular people right, training, right? And so I, 
BJ Penn had called me. He's one of my friends at Scotty, and I went over there, and I was I was living with BJ Penn, and that that was a good what, highlight in Hawaii or in Hawaii in, in, in Hilo. Oh, okay. So I lived over there for a while. So I'm like actually Pete, the Greek, Brazilian, Sicilian, Peruvian, Hawaiian. There's a whole bunch of them. So I lived over there in Hawaii in Hilo. And, Do you know uh, Jack Daniel? Jack Daniel Hill. He was another guy that lived over there if, and mm-hmm. and trained like six hours a day. Yeah, it was He's just me and friends. BJ Penn all day, all day. So he'd pick me up and, you know, Hilo is one of those towns where it's, it's adrenaline rush all the time. It's raining and stuff, and we're just having fun cruising and have, like, Randy Couture come in and teach us how to wrestle, and he fought Leota Mishida at that time. So how long, are you, how long are you living in Hawaii for? For a while. Can you put that in some kind of a time perspective? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still there. Like, if you Jocko go there, just, they, uh, they remember me. Like, look, just move I, on. I'll, just, I'll just be honest with you. I went back to Brazil first time in 16 years. It was in the middle of COVID. Everything was shut down. I'm talking about everything. No one on the street. I brought gorilla hands out there. Uh-huh. He's from Brazil, but he never been to Rio. And he went with me. And they just let me and Henzo out in the street, and we actually bumped into each other. Just me, Henzo, and Gorilla Hands. I have pictures, and all of real, only people out in the street. No kidding. And they thought I still lived there. They think I'm related to Henzo. <laughs> like, they think I'm one of them. That's how he it looks, is when I visit here. But you look like Henzo. Uh, yeah, like, they, oh, they look oh, like me. Right, I don't know. Do, we yeah. all look like each other. Do you so. still live here? You're moving so back. So they have no idea I ever left. You know, wherever I go, they still think I live there. If you go to Hilo, <laughs> you know, Pete. Like, <laughs> even here, I'm kind of still, Jeff and I are still here, even though we're not here. Yeah. And so we leave that type of presence because we love jujitsu. Okay, so. so for some unquantifiable amount of time, <laughs> you're living in, in Hawaii. Hawaii. You're training with, with BJ Penn, and this is when BJ Penn is like fighting. Yeah, a, Matt a Hughes. UFC. He had just won. He had just beaten Matt Hughes. Licked the blood off his face. Yeah. Which also, let me just throw this out there too. You were talking about how sometimes the tournaments in Brazil could be very tough for a, an American to win. BJ Penn went down there but and he's won. he's not even on the video. So if you get the video from that year, that match isn't even on the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like they, they kind of like put that. And he used to train at Gracie Baja. He's from Health Gracie. But the same thing happened. He got there. There was 100 black belts on the mat. The first day, everyone trained with him. The second day, no one wanted to even touch him. And so then he went over to, to another team, Carlson Gracie Black Belt, Novo Nial. Pedernera's. He goes over there as a purple belt. He tells me, like, Pete, you know, like, I walked up in there. I was nervous. He walks up the stairs. And Hobson Moore was, like, one of their best black belts. He's like, I triangled him day one. And they're all, like, they were surprised. He was a purple belt. And then they were, like, talking shit. They're like, oh, you know, it was lucky. He goes back the next day. He's like, I triangled him again. And then they gave him a brown belt, and they're a competition-heavy team. And so they needed someone at black belt in the weight class. They put him, and he won. And then... I was there at Purple Belt the next year. I think he won 2000, so 2001. I was at Purple Belt. They weren't going to let that happen again. They're like, no way, dude. They're like, they're like, you're not coming here and doing that again. So, But, you know, people like you. If you're supposed to lose and you win, it's just like if you're a crowd favorite, people like you. It doesn't matter what the medal says. And um, I won a lot. But then in, in Hawaii, I hurt my neck. How did you hurt your neck? So we went to Sandy's Beach, which is like a, a notorious beach for hurting people. And BJ Penn and them, you see, he'd leave me in control a lot. When he'd go to Japan and stuff, like he'd, he would tell his brothers, Pete's in charge. So it left me like, <laughs> it was hilarious. So, you know, after some time, I ended up at this beach and I hurt my neck. So that took me out of the competition scene. That like, was around like, like 2004. What happened to your neck? I got slammed on my um, I got body surfing mm-hmm. i had no Isn't idea it called breakneck beach breakneck <laughs> beach i no, had no idea that the most dangerous beach in the world they didn't tell me they're not going to tell you you know what i mean it's like you're in a you're in a room full of staff no one tells you mercy or whatever it's like yeah you know just lay on that couch so it's the same that thing. was a jab at me i don't know if you guys knew that was an no, inside jab at me because he not. thinks all my couches have ringworm and staff on <laughs> them that, like, fuck you man he didn't train <laughs> mma but mma people when you if Whoa. you go to their house and you sleep on one of their couches, like, it's like a joke. They're like, yeah, you can stay here as long as you want. Just stay on that couch. It's like a joke because you know, like, day four, wow, dude's Pete. just going to be itching everywhere. Uh, <laughs> wow. I haven't had ringworm or stuff no, I'm not in, saying in it. Years. Jeff doesn't do MMA. It's, it's crazy MMA fighters from back in the day. I'm not telling. Jeff is clean, and he's a, 
He's a Thank great you. friend. He's Thank a conservative you. American. I well, I've, I, I have personally witnessed Jeff kick people off the mat for doing whatever kind of stuff that he, that was uh, non-hygienic. No, or, Jeff's great. I mean, but hey, how? So, what 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 was the injury to your neck? To your neck? So, um, I get slammed on my neck, and I was like, "Fuck, dude!" I thought I was paralyzed, and I and I man, those little guys. I heard some people laugh, and I started getting pissed. BJ Penn grabbed me out of the ocean because they think it's funny, like if you if you get hurt at first, kind of. Ended up being hurt, that's you funny. know. Ended up being like injury. There's an entire and, series of movies called Jackass, which yeah. is literally about that right there. And like their main friend came to me, he's like, you know, anytime you want to come back here, we'll build a house for you. They're, they're just like they're happy that I took it like a man because most people are gonna be. And I still stayed there for months, like four or five months. Did after you get me. surgery? Did you get a I neck ended brace? Up, what? What's yeah, up? it was just it sucked so bad. I ended up taking. Did you get Vicodins. numbness in your arms? Oh, it was, it was fucked up. I, at first, when I got hit, I was completely numb. I thought I was paralyzed. I was like, I hit it, and I was like, whoa. And then you just shake something off. I was like, whoa. Like, whoa, I'm I'm paralyzed. This sucks. I'm like, this sucks. And I kind of, like, started accepting it. And then I thought about, the, well, one girl when, when I was in 18 years old, I traveled to Cancun. One of my best friends, she died in ocean undertow, and they call me crying, like, we lost an ocean. I go out there, I find her. This is when I was 18. We were on the news and everything in Chicago. We came back. Anyways, first thing I thought of when I, I thought of her when I got paralyzed, I thought of her. I was like, whoa. I was like back in the ocean again. I'm like, fuck. I'm paralyzed. This sucks. And I heard these fuckers laughing. And then I felt the pain come. It was the best pain in my life. Mm. It was like real pain. I was like, ah. And I look at BJ <laughs> Penn. <laughs> I'm like, I'm hurt, my friend. And he's like, he looks at me, he grabs me up. He felt like bad. He felt so fucking bad. And he grabs me out, and his friends didn't know anybody. I used to smash them all day. It was like purple belts, just random Hawaiians. I'd smash the shit out of them. They were so happy. <laughs> random <laughs> like, Hawaiians is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I was there for BJ Penn. I wasn't there, like, these guys, they're just like adrenaline dudes. Like, they'll just show up. Like, they're the type of guys that show up when you win, and they run when you lose. Mm. You know what I mean? And he knows what I'm talking about. BJ Penn's my good friend. So it was like those type of friends. They weren't like top-notch friends. So now you can how, how, how long before I'm you like, could train? I'm fuck this shit. I go back to Chicago. I'm pissed. I was Pete the Greek, Brazilian, Hawaiian back in Chicago. I was like, fuck. And Carlson has lost his team. He was like, fuck. We became best friends. We are just like, whoa. We're like, we need to gather ourselves. So like... He's on the phone calling like the shoot box coach, which is the other best team that hated top team. He's like telling him how to dismantle everyone. He's like, yeah, if you're fighting like this guy, he's like, be nice to Minotaro because he wasn't a bad guy. Mm -hmm. But he's just telling him how to dismantle these people. And they call him up and it was just funny. Carlson was great and we would study MMA videos every night. And um, not like, like how, every, how Jeff and I study jiu-jitsu, we study MMA, and we watch Fedor and everything. Like, Carlson, what do you do here? And he'd stop it and explain it. And then I start learning, and then we met Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner walks in as a blue belt, and uh, like Carlson, like, fuck it, let's put this guy to fight, you know? <laughs> Big guy, strong guy, tough guy. We taught him to Kimura. And UFC calls up, we're like, hey, put him in. Because Carlson, like that type of person, like people that they think are really big, Carlson has talked to him like a kid, like hey, Dana White, you know, <laughs> put him in. And uh, Stefan changed the whole damn game. Well, of mm -hmm. course, Vitor did before, but UFC got boring until Ultimate Fighter came out. And then um, that's why Dana White and all of them, they love me. And <laughs> no, because we all, when Dana White comes to Chicago, he takes Gibson's. Every time he shows up, we, he gets a wine from my friend from Pete the Greek, like automatic. Like it's happened like 50 times. So we go in there, Stefan, like blue belt, and those one move does like the fight of a whatever, the sentry against yeah. Forrest Griffin. Because when you fight against Carlson, guys, like you have Carlson staring at you. So he's like, Rrr. he's not a mean guy, but he's a spiritual guy. So it's like, you're just like, fuck, I'm <laughs> fucked. Like you're fighting that guy. You're fighting the whole history. It's everything. And Stefan, he knew enough. He did the Golden Gloves boxing, knew the Kimura, and he was strong. If you grab that damn Kimura, your arm's getting ripped off. And uh, 
he did that. He changed the whole game. The UFC went from rags to riches. They were mm -hmm. dying. Now everyone watching it again. UFC's huge. People are buying pay-per-views. And that's what I did when I was in Chicago. And Miguel Torres came too. We helped him out. And um, at, then he won the WEC. Yeah. And that's when Dominic Cruz took over his weight class. So it's all like related. Mm -hmm. And then I became friends with Dominic Cruz. It's all like, those are the smaller guys. Those are the smart guys. When did you open your academy? So I had surgery. Mark Coleman, I'm over there at Cobra Kai. Because for the ultimate fighter, I was like their bodyguard. It was funny. I'm not a big guy, but they like me. So Stefan invites me. <laughs> and um, so all the guys, Chris Lieben, they're all there. And I'm in the, the limo with them. And it was for the ultimate fighter, Caesar one. And we're all, it was like uh, for the grand finale. So we're all at Layman's Cobra Kai. And what's his name tells me? What's that big wrestler? Mark Coleman. He's like, hey, Pete the Greek. I just had back surgery at Dr. Joe. It's a guy in Pittsburgh. And I show up there and the guy fixes my neck. He does like the dissectomy. He's the best. He's like he's like a sniper. He'll fix you. So I go mm -hmm. there, and I'm like, yeah, I'm here from Mark Coleman. He fixed my neck, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to to compete again. I said, shoot, I'm like one injury from being away from homeless. I better open a gym. Like it was like I'm like looking for shelter. Like where do I go? <laughs> Who can I trust? I'm back in Chicago. Like I was living in Brazil. Shoot, Rio de Janeiro, Hawaii. Now I'm back in Chicago with a broken neck. People are laughing at me. Like I, I went and worked in the ghetto of Chicago. Doing what? Um, so my friends, they're getting all happy. Like, ha, 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 we knew you'd end up getting hurt. I'm like, you fucking assholes. And you got hurt. I end up getting hurt. Surfing. You know what I mean? But it doesn't matter. The people yeah. see you like, we, you got hurt from that jujitsu. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to work a job. And so I got my real estate license and I was working for my friends doing Section 8 housing. So I'd pick up people from the projects, they were tearing up projects, and bring them to uh, apartments. And I was like, fuck, dude. Like, I don't want to do this. And then it wasn't bad, but I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm having to, like, really, like, I'm like, I don't want to really have to use jiu-jitsu. I want to, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I opened up this little gym. Like a real little one. Glover came. He was in a sketchy neighborhood. I remember Glover's first day, like, the guy comes in. Glover's on the door waiting for him. He's like, y'all do tap out? Because I had a tap out sign. <laughs> y'all do tap out? Remember that, Glover? Wait, that's what Glover said when he no, walked in? No, the guy that seen oh. Glover outside the thing. Remember the first day outside my gym? He remember that. Because I, I had a big tap out sign. So people in Chicago thought that I did. They thought jiu-jitsu was called tap out. Right. It's crazy. So then I... um. I open up this little gym. Everyone's telling me, you know, you're going to get shot. You're going <laughs> to. I'm like, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> I open up the gym and bam, I get my best friends, best students right from there. They're so cool because right on North Avenue and Western are the two biggest streets in Chicago. So it, it pretty much everyone can get there from the south side to north side, from downtown, from everywhere. It's a little gym, like 600 square feet. And. Um, Man, I mean, my best friends from there, they knew I was hurt. I told them straight up, I'm like, look, my neck is hurt. I'm like, you guys just got to get good. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to fight you. Just learn how to listen. And, um, man, we got a lot of students in there. It was crazy. Like, cars parked outside. Next thing you know, all my friends are opening up gyms next to me. I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> you guys are great friends. Like, you see, business is going great. And... Um, Shoot, gym, gym got big, kids, students. I opened up a giant gym and um, things were going great. Glover then came to my giant gym. I always have Glover out for, he's always, my, I'm like, guys, we're having a seminar. Like, when with, did you guys meet for the first time? Like with Scotty. That was, that was through Scotty. Which Everything's is, Scotty. Which Everything's mentioned through like Scotty. I would have never ago. been, I would have never been, Scotty taught me how to be a California boy. I was just like Chicago, like cold winter, I didn't know anything. I'm like, yeah, I just need to smash and, and win and fight. And then Scotty shows you like surfing, he shows you everything. How and to roll a joint, stuff like that. <laughs> Scotty had one of those scooters, like uh, like a quick scooter in Brazil, and we would just go like, he was going like 40 miles an hour on a scooter, he had the first digital camera. Scotty's like from the future, back then. Now, I don't know, because now he's with the hospital stuff. I haven't mm -hmm. spent too much time with him. But back then, he was from the future. He'd teach us all this stuff. 
And, um, man, Hawaii, Brazil, everywhere. I go back to Chicago. It's kind of like, it's like a community service. Like, I'm, I'm really helping out people. Um, Chicago's like a barter system. It's like a third world country. People don't want to pay you that much. <laughs> They'd rather just barter you. Hmm. And it works out good because everyone there has, like, connections to this and that. And this guy owns that place. He owns a restaurant. You know, if you try and charge him, you end up getting less. So you're like, hey, everyone trains for free. So at my gym, people pretty much pay. Um, it's like here. You don't charge people that much, Jocko. Like, no, we try and keep it on. as – we I, try and keep it so people can come in. And I don't have Jiu-Jitsu's overhead for the like people. you. Yeah, I have overhead much lower. And so it's like – Dude, I know if you have money, I know if, you know, like, pay what you think you should. Like, you know, if there's food in the kitchen, eat what you deserve. And uh, my guys understand that. And I could make a lot more money being there, but I wouldn't be in jiu-jitsu. Like, I'm doing jiu-jitsu a service with the Glover, with the Rotolos, with BJ Penn, all these people. I'm, I'm doing a higher service. I could be at home teaching white belts. And they might quit in a few months. They might win a tournament. And I can make a lot more money for sure, 100%. But if I'm looking at it from service, like like we help the whole world. Mm-hmm. We're all over the place. The I weed like, is better in California. <laughs> and cheaper. You know, like, And legal, it? right? Is it legal in legal, Chicago? Legal, that's a big part of it, yeah. Chicago, you go to the store, it's like 40% taxes, you know? Mm. And... Um, yeah, I love Chicago. Hey, I love that place. But with my broken neck, see, I got hit by, okay, so I open up the giant gym. Bam, Glover comes over. Like, who are we doing the summer with? Jeff Glover. I'm like, yeah, again, every summer is with Glover <laughs> at my school. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just the way it is. And so um, we had a couple other ones. But most of them, like, eight out of ten summers are with Jeff. And um, The sickest I ever got was one of the seminars I did at your school. You took me to the Burger King. Grocery. He took me to Burger King twice in the Ugh. same day. That's and, not uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was coming out of both ends, Ugh. and I was, you know, Pete's like, "You all right in there, Glover?" I was like, "I hate you, man. I hate I'm it, down man. in this basement, you know. Like, I got a great home back in so San Diego pissed. waiting for me. So like, this pissed. place was here, and I'm like in Pete's basement, like, vomiting. I can just taste the like chicken. Remember chicken fries? It was uh, chicken fries. Oh, oh. That shit. This is gross. Oh, it was bad. Yeah, like that's when, whenever Pete talks about the sh- that's all I ever think about. So, 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 so my Jeff, back's feeling that great. That was the closest I ever felt so, to death, dude. Let me tell you what happened. All of a sudden, Jeff comes over. I'm <laughs> feeling great, and drunk drivers hit me and, and and break my my neck again and my back. <laughs> and then I was just like, I can't live here anymore. It's too cold. And then I went and lived with Glover. Glover, Glover, what did you used to call him? You were my therapist. <laughs> Did I? I don't remember that. Yeah, that. You're, my, you're my physical therapist. So then I met you guys. So, so, so Jeff, when you started, uh, comp- when you started like competing for real, like now you're, like no, when you started doing the worlds, and it's like 2007, 2008. What's your life like at this point? What's your training schedule looking like? It's just jujitsu, 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 right? I mean, the the jujitsu is the only thing that was not chaotic. Well, what, what what's chaotic? I mean, just life, social life, family life, finances. Where do you live? Where are you living during? I mean, this time? like, I live. Joe Stevenson let me live in his place for like two months. Big daddy. Just, I mean, I was living all over. I was living in all these places. And your whole uh, existence is just to train jujitsu. Yeah, pretty much. Are you st- are you still with with Frangia this whole time? I went between. I started. This is where I started go realizing that like this one place thing wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. That just being with Frangia wasn't going to cut it. And Mark Lehman was already a big influence to me making those videos. Mark Lehman was the first YouTube, you know, and uh, where's Mark Lehman? He, he right was in now? Vegas. He he went back home to Michigan. Does he have a school out there? Yeah, yeah. He's all low key though. Uh, no, no Instagram, nothing. He was a beast, but he was very influential, and uh, it's cool because I get to say now I trained with Mark and Dean. Yeah, because Mark and Dean were the two were big. Rivals, it was like yeah. who were the best Americans at the time? It was always yeah. Mark Lehman and Dean Lister. Yeah, and they fought, and I got to be. You know, I've spent so much time with both those guys, and um, yeah, you know, I started doing the Mark thing, and I told Frangia Mark offered me a job in Las Vegas, a full time teaching job. It was my first full time teaching job, and Frangia's school, it was like, 
friend Gia, can you match what Mark's offering me? And he was like, sorry, boy, I can't, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to keep assisting me for free, that's cool. And I was like, well, that ain't happening, man. <laughs> so I went to Mark Lehman and, and like when friend G gave me my black belt, he tied it around my waist and I had already told him, you know, I was making the move. Mm -hmm. And he like, in my ear, he was like, you know, he was like, boy, go show those guys how we do the Paragon Jiu Jitsu in the Las Vegas. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's like, you, awesome. you, you welcome back anytime, boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, was, so I started going between those two places. And I actually, that's like when I started hanging out with like Rudy. Mm. That's when I met Rudy at tournaments. And Rudy would, I would come visit Rudy. <laughs> and, and that's how I started me making friends with all you guys. Right on. You know? And um, it was like, yeah. That's, how many hours a day are you training at this time period? I mean, I'm, when, I, when I would train in every class I would teach. And I would take Mark's classes, yeah. So it was still, it was still, until recently, it was like, you know, four times a day every day. Mm -hmm. Eight to ten hours on a mat. We take naps, so. How many hours a day are the Rotolos on the mat right now? Like we got to take naps once in a while. Mm -hmm. Frequent cat naps, yeah. And then like you got to be in nature. I think nowadays it's different training. Now we do more nature training. Cause just being I'm doing recovery. I'm all about recovery now. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good to be outside a lot. When With you were surfing, like you know what I mean? Like, no, I know. They I taught me surfing. how to surf. I got into surfing, yeah. Tolos oh, taught yeah. me how to surf the other day. Nice. So nice. I surf with them. They like they surf a lot. Uh when you were training and like let's say you were getting ready for ADCC or you're getting ready for, you know, the worlds. How much drilling you doing? Nothing changed. All I, I I did everything the same. I, I think there was one tournament that I actually had like a professional coach. But it was what just was what like a jujitsu coach? No, like a, like a, a fitness, fitness nutrition. Coach? A guy named Chris Eckland in 2011, and uh, he had me doing all kinds of shit. And how'd you feel? I mean, I I that was the best year in my competitive life. Yeah. So he he you stepped it up, and then that made you better. He would he would like frown at me if I was baked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'd be like Jeff. I'd be like, fuck, fuck, fuck. You're making me feel bad for all the times that I've smiled at you and you were baked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like he, you know, he would be like, "What did you eat today?" And <laughs> like stuff like that, and, and make sure I did like real like weightlifting stuff. And that year, that was 2011, and I had the best results that year, like hands down. Did, but other than that, all, I never it, trained hard. I never, I mean, I trained hard, but I didn't work out. Right. There was no weights. There was no. Uh, what do you call it stadiums there was no stairs, no stairs yeah there's no elastic bands there was no box jumps yeah there but was taco bell there was taco games. bell video games Those and just games. dope ass jujitsu yeah that's and just thing. the best technique the most like dork about it i would go down the rabbit hole of what's next what's next move after that 20 30 move combinations before the dude would just give up and i would tap him with glover something cool. trains in his sleep i think that's mm -hmm. where he, that's where the magic happens dean does that too like you know when he would fight and we'd all like we were all broke and everything and so we'd all stay in like one hotel room and like i'd sleep on the floor but you'd like wake up and dean would be there like asleep but he would be trying he'd be like like not just his legs would be in a triangle and like triangling air and then you'd yeah. see him like roll over but when he'd roll over he would like he would like adjust his feet and get like a body lock <laughs> he'd be, like I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding like that's where he would sleep like he would sleep he'd be doing jujitsu when he was sleeping or like he'd be asleep and his his hands would be like on a rear naked like yeah. he'd be asleep like one hand under his head but his hands are in a rear naked choke so he's just like dreaming of of jujitsu and sleeping sleeping that way i met dean in brazil when i was out there uh he'd hang out my dad and i my dad came and my dad's a big strong guy too like dean like i'm a runt compared to my dad and uh he just loved me hanging out with dean he's like ha 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 like, <laughs> Oh, like your friend is a cool guy, strong guy, Pete. You know, he's like looking at me like, why can't I be like Dean? You know, I'm just like, whoa. So like they, they'd always hang out. It was like for like three weeks. And Dean showed up to Scotty's house, and that's where I met him. Because Scotty had a little man. I lived at Scotty's house on the weekend. During the week, I lived uh, mostly at Oswaldo Owls, which is a little gym where Andre Galvao lived in and Jacare. We all lived in there together. Andre was a blue belt. And at that time, it, 
that place they would lock the door on Fridays. So if we, if they locked us in, we'd have to stay inside. There was no way out. <laughs> it would be like the door to victory locks on on Friday until Monday. So me and Glover gotta figure shit out on the weekend if we're living in the little gym. It was a little gym, a little bit bigger than here. So I would leave and go to Scotty's house in Baja. It's like 40 minutes away, it was like vacation. Scotty had his house set up like a hostel. So all these people would come stay. They have the mats. I think we had the original. Yeah, Dean brought the guys from, um, I think they were their original friends yours. And he brought them and Dean wasn't allowed to train. They wouldn't let him train anywhere because he went like the year before and leg locked everyone. Mm -hmm. So he was banned from every gym, and he had ADCC coming up. And I was kind of in a similar situation. So, so we just, um, Scotty had a little thing right in the, in, the, in the living room, and Dean just trained with me. And he went the first day and lost. It was Tony D'Souza who was also staying over there. Tony got disqualified for making the guy too bloody. They mm -hmm. disqualified him for being too mean to the opponent. No one even seen that match. But Dean, Dean was kind of bummed out. We went and hung out and like, we hung out with some chicks and had fun that night. And he's like, I'm gonna do the absolutes. And, and no expectation yep. of winning, goes there and just crushes it. Yep. And then so I was like, whoa, dude, like this is so cool. Like, I, that's when, yeah, that's when I met Dean. He just became ADCC champ. He was like, he just turned in like national superstar of Brazil like after that yeah. fight. And he leg locked everyone, and yeah. then like I kind of felt happy about that. And I was reading; I couldn't go down. I was, I was, uh, I couldn't go down for whatever reason to, because normally I would corner him, right? Yeah. And I couldn't go down, and so I'm reading the updates on the interwebs in the guard forums. No, it wasn't <laughs> on in the guard. It was on was uh, one, submission huh? grappling. I think submissiongrappling.com, and they're putting, but they're it's a translation from Portuguese, but it's like some kind of a computer translation that someone's translating it and posting it. And I remember Peda Pano that in, in Portuguese that translates to cloth foot. And so it's saying like the American, no, cloth foot has the American in an arm strangle. <laughs> and it says, this American has tubes to his lung. The cloth foot cannot make him tap. It was, Whoa. and I'm like, oh, dude, he's waiting. And then it's like, uh, the American got his back. And I was like, ah, you know, I'm like yeah. reading this. I was in my car, I was in my freaking reading minivan. It. Yeah, I was like in my minivan, like, ah, yeah, That's you know, dope. totally fired up that he's he's doing this and ends up with the. Dean's you know, like a national hero anywhere I go. Like if we go to Brazil, he's like, I, we hung out in Chicago. It was great. <laughs> I just feel like, like Dean's in there in the bar. He's like, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm his friend. <laughs> he's a great person. Shoot, he, like you guys really helped out Glover and I, because my dad, like I said, he's like a strong alpha dude, but I didn't really grow up with him that much. I worked with him. And I think Glover and the same, we have strong moms and stuff, but like meeting you and, and seeing how you do things really helps us. Like, uh, right, Glover? We got we got pretty serious. Mostly Echo's arms kind of. <laughs> so we got serious. Changed like, my life in a like we definitely way. tried to better our lives from meeting you. Like, that's the truth. Glover, right or no? I'm, I'm joking, of course. You know that. You guys know that. Yeah. Jeff, when you, when you, you always give Dean some some credit or a lot of credit actually when I watch like interviews you'll be talking about Dean and you'll be talking about like how he helped out your leg lock game did, what, did that happen when you were teaching here you were already leg locking and heel hooking people right yeah but I mean Dean motivated all of us yeah anybody even those who didn't train with him we were all like well, what that, is this guy doing? Dean, leg locks are bullshit. Yeah, but Dean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, best comeback ever. A, a and yeah, friend, but Dean, you know what I'm saying? And Frangia, that was the one. When, that was when Frangia, f like, I f heard him admit like leg locks worked. He yeah, was like, "Look, there's this guy, Jeffy." I was like, "What? There's this American guy. <laughs> He's tap solo." And I was like, "What? He tap solo? He's like, I would leg lock Jeffy." <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was like, <laughs> "You know, it was like, this, it was like oh, sad day, dog. Fuck." Yeah, but uh, you know, it's like that. The Dean made it okay for us. Mm -hmm. You know that when an OG would be like, "No, no, no, no," I'd be like, "Shut up, you grumpy old OG." <laughs> this guy's making them. They're legit. So it is true. You know. Yeah, that's uh. What about the game? Like, I'll read about your game. Like, you'll do donkey guard, which is for anyone that doesn't do jujitsu, it's going to be kind of hard to explain. But just imagine someone that you're going to fight 
And what they do is they turn around, get on their get on their hands and knees and like jump, go attack you with their ass, basically, is what it looks like if someone doesn't know. Yeah. That's freaking mayhem, dude. Yeah. Well, it's 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 you know, it's based off defense. It's based off self defense. Mm-hmm. I'm a master of people grabbing me. Mm. So you grab them me. to grab you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I encourage you to grab me in positions that you know they think is good. Mm-hmm. And and my self defense shit kicks in. And it just does what it does, and I have a heel hook, you know. It's a combination of, like, the flying leg scissors technique, mm-hmm. you know, um, that and just kind of doing things backwards. The level of confidence that you have, ah, it might be unmatched. I don't know if anyone wants to echo. I would agree. Unmatched, unmatched. level of confidence. Unmatched. Pe- unmatched level unmatched. of confidence. Like, no one's even close. I think it's an unmatched level of confidence to see you compete and see you just offer positions to your opponent that seem insane. And I, w- you I would don't rather care. look stupid than look scared. Mm. Well, I don't. Thi- I also don't think that there's been a grappler that is more. I hate to say this word, but like more entertaining to watch. Like watch it. Like I could watch you. I go watch you all day roll jujitsu. I go watch you all day. Like I told you, I have like videos of you and my son, like like you know, one one year, one like the next year, like eight minute videos. You guys are just rolling, mm-hmm. and I just I'll just watch them because it's just even though you're going against a kid, I'm like God, what is he doing? Right? Oh, oh, look at what he's doing right there. Mm-hmm. But then when you watch you compete, the same thing. It's freaking um, amazing to watch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've worked very hard to be as good at jujitsu as I am. That level of confidence, though, un, kind of unmatched. I mean, mm-hmm. even like you've been teaching a series this week, it's like stuff I've never even. Well, it's weird because you started teaching this series, and f- you know, I watched you here for five years. I watched you give your back to people. I watched you like do these weird positions. I'm like, wow, man, that's just like a Jeff Glover thing. And then f- you were, were explaining it the other day. I was like, oh. This is not just a Jeff Glover thing. It's just that Jeff Glover's doing something that I didn't understand. Yeah. yeah. Which I, is, I, I, I trust my jujitsu. Don't you trust your jujitsu? Sometimes, not as much as you do, bro, at <laughs> I tr- all. I trust in it, dude. My coach used to tell me, believe, and I believe, dude. Yeah. yeah I Jeff, believe. Jeff doesn't reference other people when he does things. He'll just think of it and do it way cooler. No, that's like, uh, that's why I say, dude, I feel like an idiot. Like, you're like, oh, don't you trust your jujitsu? I'm like, well, not as much as you do, bro, apparently. Because you're just in there just not caring what happens and still, you know. Jeff moves well. I'm the worst, actually. I think I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> People ask me about you every, everywhere I go do my seminars. They're like, what's it like to roll with Jocko? And I always tell them, like, you were always so nice to me. You and Dean and Echo, you guys are always, you know, so gentle with me. <laughs> I'm so little and I, I go all hard and you guys are like, ah, little Jeff. And like one one time you actually like turned it on and put me in a kimura you know and people love when i tell them that like Did there's I no really? point to that besides people being like whoa <laughs> you know, Jocko? I'm like, I'm like, yeah he's really good no that's <laughs> that's well i was you know would feel like i wanted to learn how to kind of roll that that way where you learn more you know yeah, i'm not you a guys good, were all nice to me i'm not a good roller and learner uh you're that's what you do and i tried to like get that from you to be yeah. a good roller and learner, yeah, which is it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's it's more fun that way. You know? No, I can see that's something that uh, lasts this, longer to this day for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, I got like neck surgery. Why did I get neck surgery? Freaking Dean Lister trying to choke me, and I'm not tapping. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm an Dean, idiot. Dean wasn't as nice to me as you guys were. <laughs> yeah, Dean would hold me and like growl oh, in my yeah. ear and shit. Look at Glover. He can't get up. Look it. By the way, everybody, everybody, come here. Look it. Come here. By the way, you ever seen uh, you ever seen a man get out of this? Watch Glover. Try to get out. Watch. Look, he can't. Look how weak he is. Oh, he can't yeah. get out. That's that's like being nice compared to what Dean has done, done to you. Me. I've oh seen you, God, been, that, dude. It's, I know. It's, I saw that shit. It's humil. It's it's <laughs> like a a test in humiliation, right? Yeah. Like no, I, to, I gained a lot of respect for you. How can I do jujitsu? I have two hundred and twenty five pounds. I lift weights every day. <laughs> Freaking training jujitsu every day, and a, 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 a me, I'm a grown man. And Dean would put me in positions where I could not move, or he, you know, could not look, could not move my body in any way. How's that happening? No, I remember you'd say that. And, and he's like holding me with one. And he doesn't lift weights. No, 
You're like, Dean never lifts weights. And he would say stuff like that. He'd be like, he'd be like, you need more CrossFit, Jungle, right now. Where's your CrossFit? I thought you could squat a lot. What are you doing? How's that squat working out right now? Oh, that's perfect, bro. That's so good. Yeah. We all say that. Yeah, stuff. he did that shit to me, too. It's good, but it's not good. But, but <laughs> so, so speaking of, like, the Dean Lister Jocko thing, because I will say, thankfully, I got to be Dean Lister's guy, you know? In those years when yeah. he was becoming a champion, I was the guy... I would I would train with him every day. We train two hours, three hours, four hours a day. You need to have someone like that in your life. Uh, you had Bill the Grill. Yeah, right. That's, right. that's, that's right. your guy. So anybody that's doing jujitsu, you need to find that that guy. Yeah. And the only pro, like we talk about the play for rolling and look, I just talked about Dean, like humiliate and believe me, he'd humiliate me any day. I'd get a position on him, bro. I would go twice as hard humiliating him and having fun with it paybacks a bitch though but <laughs> for jujitsu you got to find somebody or like it's probably going to be one person it's hard to even find more than one person True. like this yeah. but someone that's going to be your like true brother teammate yeah. that you're going to roll with you're going to learn with you're going to work on stuff you're going to stay after you're going to drill stuff you're going to get tapped out by each other you don't care it's just like that you had build a grill yeah how did he come into the scene yeah, he just he did you know he just started showing up how far behind he he's he's five years younger he was 13 he was 13 when he started but we had him in the adult class by the time he was 15 he was the purple belt national champion <sighs> breaking off adults him and chrome gracie made it to the finals of a tournament they were both 15 years old God. tapped eight dudes on the in the way to meet each other in the finals and it was like you know like dude kids can be really tough. oh dude i had that conversation <laughs> with lovato Junior, we were at ADCC because he was like 17. He was, he was actually, and I know he was 17. I don't know how old I was, but I was like 20. I was maybe even, I was a grown, definitely a grown man. And I was like, dude, you beat me. He goes, I said, dude, you beat me. I said, we were purple belts. You beat me. And he goes, I beat you twice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he beat me in the weight class and he beat me in the absolute, bro. <laughs> and I was like, hell yeah, that's a 17 year old. I, I don't remember how he beat me in open, but he swept me like I, you know, sometimes you get swept and you're just like, man, I hope no one got that on video because you feel real ignorant. Thunk, you like landed hard. Yeah, he just <laughs> did like one of those sweeps to me that I was all just dumb. And, uh, you know, it was just awesome. But yeah, a, li a guy that's young, you know, I don't care. Like a 17 year old can work out a lot, but he's not going to be, he's not going to have man strength yet, you know. And that was badass Lovato just, just, just retired. But man, it made it. Two rounds at ADCC against the best in the world. It's hard for me to talk about Lovato because he's a good dude. He's just he just came to my gym. Yeah. It's just so much to say. We met him from Scotty too. Yeah, yeah, good friend. He's another one OTM. Yeah. I would see him at every tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were bros. Yeah, those got well him you you guys were just competitors. He would go to he would go train with Layman a lot. A lot of people would make their way to Vegas to spend time with Layman, and I would run into them there because Layman hired me as his jujitsu teacher for two and a half years. How many so, classes a day were you teaching there? Like, you know, a full time thing, like I like I was uh -huh. doing here, like yeah. four a day. You know. I almost had that job too. It was a good Which job. Which one, the too. Layman job? The Layman job, but I went to I went to Hilo instead because <laughs> what I used to do is this: I used to stay in Vegas Monday through Thursday, and then drive over to to Los Angeles, this is after I got back from Brazil. Mm -hmm. I would drive over to Los Angeles and train at Eddie Bravo's school, and that's how I met them, Joe Rogan, Eddie Bravo, uh, Tate Fletcher. Oh, yeah. It was in the bomb squad. I had my friend uh, Rob Kamen. Uh, he's the Dutch yeah. kickboxer, and they were over there. And so, because in, in Vegas, the hotel's were like 40 bucks a night. I'd stay in Harrah's, and the weekend, like 300. I'm like, oh, I'm going to LA. <laughs> I would stay at Scotty's brother's house sometimes, Cade which was um i also used to live there so when scotty left brazil he became like the los angeles guy so anytime we go to la we hit up scotty and scotty knew everyone and everything and and shoot then glover that's when i got hurt you know i was i, I wanted to be an mma fighter so mm -hmm. i i was more interested in like i'm like you know i'll put the medals aside I'm what was your weight bj penn i was a lightweight okay. light in the middle when did you guys see the no gi versus the gi like at what point did you see that as sort of what you were gonna do adcc that would be like when well if my yeah. coach carlson he didn't like the gi 
Like, um, Elio Gracie put him to fight his first MMA fight with the Gi, and he told him, I'll never do that again. You're crazy. Mm. You know what I mean? He took that down, and um, and that was that. And then the Carlson Gracie team never really used the Gi. Too they used it for the kids. Yeah. They used it to warm up. But the best guys, like, Carlson would just grab someone by the neck like this. It doesn't matter if they're a kid or not. And if they'd flinch like this, like, no, no, you're just jujitsu. And if you go like this and the kid is like, oh, he's like, okay, you're fighting. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> even if they're adult, it's just, he's not even that, he was already older, but he was like this. Oh like, uh, and the kid's like, uh, like a man who grabbed Nick Diaz like that, he's going to be happy. Yeah. He's like, oh, you're, you're, you're about to fight. You go here. <laughs> and so that's, that's how our team was. Um, and Carlson, he was nicer to the bigger guys. Like, so if you're like a Rona size, he'd be real nice to you. If you're like my size, it's kind of like, like, you know what, Pete? Like, Jeff gets the same way you do, and Jeff gets around the big, big guys. He he gets mean to me a little bit. Carlson the same way. So, no, but I'm just saying, like, big people, uh -huh. they give a good presentation as far. Like, Dean, he's an example. You, I respect you bigger I – mean, uh, I respect size. I'm a little dude. Big dudes scare me. He likes it. Like Whether crazy. they know jiu-jitsu or not. Glover always has big friends, dude. Some strong, tough guys, dude. I come around yeah. like, fuck, Glover. I'm the yeah, weird thing about Dean is he's a mutant because he's still so flexible. He is. You know, it's crazy. It's a weird flexibility. Dean's special. He's like the Rotolo brothers, like yeah. Glover, like BJ Penn. These are all special. Like, what do you think, Glover? Special people, right? We're all pretty special. Jacko, like, dude. Jiu-jitsu people are some of the coolest people in the world today. Our, it, we have the DNA. Like, it's, it has to be in your DNA to be a superhero. At least know something of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Well, there's, there's definitely a thread of, like, uh, it's, you know, they say uh, martial arts, right? Like, it's an art like an art form. And then you think a stereotypical artist, you think like somebody, a rock and roll artist, yeah. like he's a little bit crazy. Like a painter is a little bit crazy. A poet's a little bit crazy. Let's face it, the jujitsu player, if he's gonna be good, he's gonna be a little bit, he's gonna have a little bit, <laughs> he, there's a decent chance I should say, he's a little bit crazy. Especially like a deep you know? half guarder to go under someone like that. Yeah. You have to be. But you gotta be, you know, when you talk to Dean, you, you start talking to him about jiu-jitsu, he knows weird things about jiu-jitsu. It's like you were saying about Glover the other day. Like you asked Glover some question, some detailed question about some weird section of jiu-jitsu and all of a sudden he's talking to you about something and you're like, how do you know that? How is it Glover possible that you know that? That's the, way, that's the way Dean is. Have you ever asked Dean like, if you say Dean like, what, uh, hey Dean, I'm having trouble with this triangle. And he'll say, what kind of triangle? And you say, what do you mean? And he'll say, well, there's nine types of triangles. Whoa. And he'll, then he'll tell you what they all are yeah. and tell you all the specifics about Dean it. Dean needs history. a book like that. He's, I think like uh, Dean knows he a lot of history too. Cool Bro, let me tell you a story about Dean. We were, we were at a, uh, an event and we were doing some jujitsu, like presenting basic jujitsu kind of self-defense to a few hundred people. Yeah. And uh, he's showing a way to escape someone's like, Bear hug, right? This yeah. is basic jujitsu or basic self defense. So you grab a bear hug and he's showing, oh, you put the one hand in front of the face, then you put the other hand underneath that one and you can make space and you push the person away. And so he shows it a couple times. This hand goes here, this hand goes here, you push him away, make space, boom. And he goes, Any questions? And a guy in the audience says, uh, Hey, I have a question. And Dean says, Yeah, what's the question? The guy says, I, I only have one hand and he sh holds up like he's only got one hand. Uh, what what should I do? And Dean, without missing a beat, like just instantaneously goes, oh, if you only have one hand, you put this hand here, you use your shoulder. He, he like had the ultimate solution for a person that only has one hand that's doing jujitsu self-defense. Like that's that's some next level knowledge. Yeah. You know what improvise. I'm saying? He can improvise because of the amount of knowledge he has, when he improvises, yeah. it's not bullshit. Yeah, that's the weird thing. It didn't even, he answered it so quickly. Yeah. He didn't even need to, you know, yeah. I would need to be like, well, come on out here, let's look at it, let me look, let's go through it. Yeah. Dean like knew what to say. No, he's, he's good. He doesn't know how to not say anything else. <sighs> it was freaking crazy. Uh, Jeff, what injuries have you gotten from jujitsu? All of them, mm -hmm. you know. What's the worst the, ones? The wor I mean, I had a, a back surgery, but I can't even say that that happened from jujitsu. Mm -hmm. The injury yep. itself, uh, I don't know where that happened. I don't know how that happened, but I had like, what'd you have? Dis micro discapomy is what I had, you know. And so uh, they pulled some discs out. Where in your back? Lower yeah, back? Yeah, my lower back. And uh, that that was the most miserable, long chronic pain I've ever had. 
And was so. it like the pain that people get down their legs? Yeah, and all pretty that stuff? typical. Jeff yeah. was crawling around his house. No, I was crawling. It was to the point where I was. I, I would wake up, cry for like an hour, you know, crawl into the shower, and then crawl back to bed. Call some one of my friends to come feed me. I mean, it was just horrible, you know. That and must be you texted me one time. I was like, remember, dude? I was like, Jocko, help me. Somebody help me, dude. My back hurts. I don't know how to do it. I know when, when Jack Glover texted me. I know shit's getting serious. It's probably it's like, somebody help me. It was, it was bad, dude. I was eating Advils and shit because I don't want to take, like, I don't know. I don't want to take, like, pills. Yeah. So I was like, I'll take the Tylenols or whatever. How long ago did you get that back surgery? That was in April. And, so and like how's the recovery? Now. It's good. I'm back to mean. I mean, Jocko, I wasn't even teaching classes. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't do anything. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm back to. Like I, I didn't want to be able to roll again, and I'm rolling again. I was like, I was like, listen, Doc, I'm not trying to get you to fix me to the point where I win world titles, Doc. Yeah. I just want to be able to like be on the mat and show a move to somebody without crying, you know. And, and now I'm at the point where I'm like, shit, dude, should I take matches again? <laughs> Like nothing hurts anymore, man. My surgeon is a jujitsu guy. Oh. He's one of Frenchy's uh, students, and um, and what do you do? A discotomy, micro discotomy. So he pulls some little disc out, get it away Rup from your nerves. Yeah, ruptured disc. Yeah, something like that. Jeff took pictures of it. Yeah, no, they recorded it. They took a whole. They, recorded they showed like just breaking out the eye. Little, <laughs> looks like little teeth. The doctor was just so kind to me, man. He he, you know, he's like, you know, see you tomorrow at six a.m. for surgery. Yeah. He was like, what? <laughs> Doesn't take a week or nothing. He's like, no, nope, tomorrow. See you there. Got it. And just got it done. Boom. And how long did it? Did the relief was like instant? Really? As soon as I woke up from anesthesia, I was like so happy. Were you scared about getting back surgery? Not at all. Or you were just like, hey, I've had enough. That was done. Because I know a lot of people, you know, they go through that time period where they're like, I don't want to get surgery, which I get. Yeah. Because yeah. oh yeah, well know, I did that. I I went through that like oh I'm gonna foundational training it away. Yeah, there's like a stance that I'm gonna hold for three minutes and mm -hmm. it's like none of that shit was working. Yep. So Yoga. you tried all that stuff all and it's not shit, working. No. And eventually the pain gets to a point. I know people that have had surgeries and they haven't gone great and it sucks. Yeah. So I generally tell people like, hey, if you can put it off, put it off. And then at a certain point, you got to go. Okay, look, I tried, and this isn't working. And I know a lot of people that have gone just like you. They they went and got surgery. And they wake up and they're like, oh, I'm healed. I mean, imagine that. Go from debilitating pain, which is what you had. You wake up and you're healed. I did that. What, yeah. what surgery was that? Well, I had five. Yeesh. So the first one, it's just, uh, the first one was in Hawaii. They cleaned it out. That was fixed. And then later on, like I had the Glover one in my lower back, but it went bad. Sometimes with those things, like it could, when you get it cut, the, the disc, the disc comes back. Like your Pete's scar, your scar is so big. Like my scar that I have from the thing, you can't even see it, dude. But mm -hmm. when I had my car accident with the drunk drivers, they, I also, it made my neck numb again, my arm and my <laughs> leg. So I had both. I was like, whoa. That's a good like, thing, right? That's yeah. a good thing. No, they're these ones. There's a I don't know. There's some, I don't know. But I have artificial discs in there. And, and how so when working. they put that in there, it took away that numbness. I was just like, oh. But it still gets sore. Of course, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But it took away that. You're just like, oh. And I thought I was getting a disectomy in there, whatever they call it. I went into surgery thinking they were going to clean it out. And I'm reading on a thing that says disc replacements, too. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like. Disc replacements are only like. 10 years old, 12 years old in the neck. Yeah. And so, so it's awesome, right? So he, yeah, so he says, well, I, I did it and I met these people. I was, because oh, I I can't tell you everywhere I've been. I've been everywhere. But I'm also friends with Hegan Machado and I was helping him. He was helping me. I guess we help each other. We're friends in Beverly Hills at his school. I was teaching Ashton Kutcher and all these John Wick guys and they had recommended Daniel Bernhardt. So he's the director. He's the guy that took over it's either Michael or Daniel. He took over after Van Damme. Remember, like, in Kickbox, it was, like, Van Damme, then it became, like, some other guy? Mm. That became him. And then he is the director of all the Matrix stuff. Uh, okay. And so his kids like me a lot. I was teaching them private lessons. Um, and who else is there? Oh, they got Joey Diaz. I gave – I got Joey Diaz in the jiu-jitsu, actually. He – um he did a comedy show in Chicago, and he calls me. It was in Indiana. And he calls me up. He's like, oh, Pete the Greek, 
I haven't met you, but they tell me you're the guy. <laughs> if I'm in Chicago, so I went out there to his comedy show, and after his show, um, I'm like, he was talking about martial arts with, with passion. I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, you need to join jujitsu. And he's like, serious? I'm like, and he got like a tear in his eyes, and he went back, when he went back home, he actually joined. And when I show up to Hegan's, I saw him there, and I did a video and everything, and Hegan's just a cool dude. I don't know why I even brought him up, but I just think of him, he's like a dean. He's one of those big dudes mm -hmm. that like, that people just feel inspired around. And um, she got the, shoot. If those guys met Glover, they would've went nuts. Imagine they like me, they freaking. No, Hegan used to make a point to come to me at every tournament and say the nicest stuff to me, dog. No kidding. He's like, this boy is genius, is mm -hmm. genius. He said like stuff like that back, dog. You were so cool and nice to me, thank you. And we used to hang out, <laughs> Dean and Hegan and I in, in Brazil, my dad and stuff, that was like our little crew. And, um, that's what Hegan did. He went to everybody. Like everybody that was coming up and was cool, mm -hmm. he would go up to them and just encourage the shit out of them. That's pretty cool. You know, there, there was like a zero player hater in that dude's body. Jack. And yeah, like I have a rule with him. Like we're not allowed to talk about jujitsu. He's like, he's like, he likes me because I remember him of Carlson Gracie. Carlson was his favorite uncle. He's like, if, if the Machado brothers could have trained with anyone, they wish they would have trained with Carlson because that was this part that they didn't get into the mixed martial arts part because they didn't have him as the coach. Like, if Carlson was our coach, we would have fought. And so I remind Hegan of Carlson a lot. He loves having me around. And, and I met all those those high-level people and, and Joey Diaz. And I, I just want to say, man, thanks, because that was part of my rehab, too, yeah. was um, I lived at Hegan's house for a while. What, he, rehab for your neck? Um, yeah, just like... Um, or for I your got, back. Let me think which one it was. Car accident. <laughs> the car accident got both of them. Because mm -hmm. you got... <sighs> I was on the news in Chicago. It was a big thing, like... Mm -hmm took me in all that stuff. And it's, the gangbangers tried to run off. So they hit me and they ran off. And it was funny, I'm like, these fuckers are running and they're running away. They're running out of the minivan that hit me. And then they just start dropping because they were injured too. Oh. <laughs> and then like, they take me to the hospital and they thought I was part of them. They're like, no, just listen here, buddy. I'm like, look, I'm the guy that got hit. They're like, we don't want to hear that. I'm like, get me out of here. And I just left. And that was like um, the same hospital when you see the Joker and Batman, like he's blowing it up. It's called St. Elizabeth. It's right over there in Chicago. I live right in the, Chicago's cool. I mean, I come from a pizza family, a hot dog family. I'm Sicilian and Greek. So my, my uh, grandma's side is um, the Rotolos. It's funny, they're, they're Italian, their dad. Um, He's actually like, I think we're cousins. We figured it out last night. Because <laughs> their, their restaurant they're related to is called La Villa. That's the last restaurant I ate at with my mom before she passed away. It's right by our house. It's one of the old, old school restaurants. Um, shoot. It's like this guy was from Chicago. Chicago's a, it's Chi Town. It's a little yeah. town. We all know each other. And um, shoot, Glover over here. I'll tell you one thing. I've met a lot of creative people. Scotty was creative like Glover in his own way as far as putting everyone together. So yeah. that Scott, I know I keep bringing up Scotty, but man, I wouldn't have met any of these people without him. He, right? he like propelled jujitsu through, uh, provided a lot of fuel for jujitsu when there wasn't much fuel for jujitsu. In, in Brazil, he thought he was Paquita and he thought I was Carlson. Glover's like Holes Gracie. Mm. Like maybe like different spirits find, or I don't know, thinking like that, maybe we find them, but Holes and Carlson were business partners. Uh, Holes was the best black belt from the other side of the family. And when he became black belt, he would come to Carlson's and train, and sometimes these guys would beat him. There was like two guys that could beat Holes at Carlson's gym, and Holes said, you know what, I want to train with you guys. And so Holes came over, and Carlson said, wait a minute, you're not going to teach at my class. You can have your own class. So at Carlson's school, they had two rooms so Carlson would teach in like room A Monday Wednesday Friday and then Holes would take that room Tuesday Thursday Saturday and they would switch and mm -hmm. go to the other room the other days and then they would have a friendly competition between their students and that's how they kept the level so high yeah, so when legit. Holes got Holes was black belt he, his his best black belts were Carl Carlinos Gracie you know he had he had Fabio Santos he had mm -hmm. and Carlos Props. Gracie Jr., but most of the guys went to Carlinos when Holes died because they want to stick with the Gracie family.
But the best one of those guys, not the competitor, but the most technical was Jacare Cavacanti. It would be like where Frangina Jacare. comes from. So that was the most technical of holes. The old, the, the, old, the, the white yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The old one. So yeah, he... I went to his So that's how we're kind of like, I'm more like Carlson's side. Like, you know, like, no, it's not going to work. Fuck you. And Glover's like, no, no, no. Just grab me here, grab me there. So that's why we're probably friends because mm-hmm. we kind of, we're kind of like opposites. Jeff, what was the discussion you had with uh, Henry Gracie the other day? Uh, sport, jujitsu, self defense. What was that? What was that discussion about? Um, yeah, it was like a meme that I saw, and it was like self. De- it was talking about how how people in in like self defense jujitsu will say something like, "Oh, you know, they have problems with tournaments, mm-hmm. sport jujitsu. I don't do that sport jujitsu shit. Well, I do that uh, self defense style." And he was like, "Imagine a boxer telling you that." it would be like, I don't do that sport boxing shit. I just do that self-defense boxing. Mm-hmm. It's like, how crazy would they sound saying that, right? So this is to someone that might think, well, so, you know, oh, you, oh, you do that, you know, you train on a mat with a gi on. That's not realistic. So you'd get your ass kicked in a real fight. I mean, listen, whatever it was, it was a funny ass meme. Yeah. And I posted it. Okay? <laughs> and, then, and then one of his, one of his students, uh-huh. some dude wrote just some, some pretty hostile, like, you don't know what you're talking about shit Glover so I went to his page Mm -hmm. and I saw that he was like this scrawny 35 year old dude like my size Mm -hmm. you know and I'm like and fuck this dude, you know? So I, I, I like, I like took, a, I, I took a screenshot of his belt that he had because he had a belt that I had never seen and I'm like, what is this, some karate belt, you know? Whoa. And I was like, look, this is the kind of guy who like argues with me about anything in jujitsu. It's some dude who doesn't even do jujitsu. <laughs> and Hanner was like, hey, what up, Jeff? Send me a message. <laughs> Da, da, da. And I found out that Hanner has his own belting system. I didn't know that, dog. I didn't know I, didn't know I was personal. He was like, yo, that was a personal attack, bro. And I was like, hey, first of all, as your friend, because I've known him for a long yeah. time since we were both like, you know, 17. I was like, as your friend, if you feel like I personally attacked you, honestly, whatever it was, I apologize. I was yeah. like, I don't want to personally attack you. You're the man, dude. But like on a professional level, I didn't know yeah. you had your own belting system. And that I was like making fun of one of your dudes. Whoa. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, dog, we have this whole system." Da da da. And he explained it to me for mm-hmm. like an hour. And it, you know, I have ADD, dude. I yeah. can't be listening. To I shit can't like imagine that. you having a one hour. Dude, time. I'm I was pretty like, surprised we're holding out right now, yeah. dude. Well, I'm that's like, that's how I ended the conversation. I was like, "The weed done. is wearing off." Uh, you made your point. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, I hurt Whoa. your feelings. Um, yeah, we all do basic jujitsu, but I don't think like. I don't think like people who only do self defense will ever be able to beat somebody who does sport jujitsu, yeah. and that's the end of my point. You know? I, I had a guy on social media over the last couple of days. Um, he he posted something. I can't, I wish I could get the exact quote for you, but it was something like this. And I get the spirit of what he was saying. He said, "You know, I know this guy. It was something along the lines like this guy wants me to train jujitsu, but I told him, listen." There's a difference between jujitsu and crazy old marine, and you're not going to be arm barring me when I'm gouging eyes, right? And so that was the comment. And he kind of like thought he probably thought like I'd be like hell yeah because I love the marines and I love the military. But I haven't responded to him yet. But I'm going to respond to him and I'm going I'm to say, hey, bro, like. Actually, you're not going to be gouging anybody's eyes when you're getting choked and arm locked because that's what's really going to happen. And, you know, Dean always has a good explanation of like, oh, you know, hey, oh, some of the guy will say to Dean like, well, yeah, I would just like bite your face. And Dean will be, Dean's like, yeah, cool. Then I'll be mad. Yeah. Nice. You know, because yeah. then you make Dean mad Uh-oh. or you make a jujitsu guy mad. So now when they're mounted on you. Yeah. Like I'm also going to bite your face. Yeah, we had a friend here uh, that was a SEAL, a jiu-jitsu guy, and he got into a street fight, and he like was a cross side on a dude. You might remember, he got his ear bitten off. Like kind Whoa. of not bitten off, but like if you, took, if you took a piece of pizza and like turned it to the side and took a bite, not out of like this tr- the tip of the triangle, but like out of the side, it looked like that, like just a bite was gone. You know what I'm saying? Like a bite was gone of this dude, of this f- seal's ear. But now what happened in the fight? Now he was pissed. Oh, He's a, oh yeah, I mean, he just like annihilated this guy, could have killed him or whatever. But yeah, so that self-defense stuff of like, well, I'll kick you in the nuts or I'll, uh, you know, eye gouge you or I'll fish hook you. No, you actually, or you may, maybe you will, but it's not going to help. 
Sure. It's not gonna help. And the other thing is like, oh, well, oh, jujitsu, why would you wanna go to the ground in self-defense? Don't wanna go to the ground in self-defense. Hopefully you don't have to. Yeah. Hopefully you just knock a dude out, you know? Hopefully you just, you know, give him a nice one, two, three, and the dude's knocked out and you move on, carry yeah. on with your day. Yeah, but we landed there and yeah. now we're here. Yeah, but all of a sudden I got, you know, gang tackled yeah. or tackled by yeah. somebody or I tripped yeah. and fell. And now the only way I can handle the situation is if I know how to get back on my feet and do jujitsu, arm yeah. lock somebody or whatever. Yeah. And I'm a purple belt Pan Am champ. So guess what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do all that shit you just said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be uh, not good. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's definitely something to think about. Have you ever had, how is jujitsu? performed for you <laughs> in the streets I mean I've never lost a street fight mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a witness <laughs> what is your go-to move in a street fight no you're not you've never <laughs> seen me fight anybody <laughs> I'm a witness oh no I'm not a witness that's right <laughs> Ribbon <laughs> statement. <laughs> dude you know what you're just imagining how kick-ass it would be well, that's, that's what right. happens though when Glover tells me about a fight that he had it's like I'm there like I already imagined it because I know his moves he's like yeah I double legged the guy I ran around him I laughed at him God, he tried to chase was, me that must be so that's confusing. what I was trying to say with with Henner is that Henner is like he, he he fails to mention that he's a badass wrestler dog mm-hmm He's a dope ass boxer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, how did you win street fights? I'm like, I never really used jujitsu. I always like faked double legs and then punched the shit out of dudes <laughs> when they fell to the like, oh, I'm gonna get double legged and I punched them and then I was like, well, didn't even use any jujitsu there. Yeah, but but, but you well, my know. coach was with with Ilio. He was that was his best. He was his best student. Look on this subject. It's like I started off with many truths exist at the same time with this subject. Oh. They, they they're both okay. true and they're both exist at the same time, and it's almost pointless to talk about this. What do you shit. call it? A paradox? What do you call that? I don't Is know. What like do you guys call that? Echo? This sounds like something like Echo would know. I think yeah, we're, we're just. Go I ahead. do a lot of times when people have a strong argument for or against. They they look at it. My, what my brother would call in a vacuum. So they'll take a very individual thing, unchallenged in the real world kind of a thing. Whoa. And then a concept. No, I'm not saying jujitsu as a whole, but just like how you said, bro, there's yeah. so many truths going on in there. Yeah. But I'm saying a concept, and then they'll challenge it against sometimes a straw man, but sometimes not uh, another in the vacuum concept, and then they'll go to battle. Mm. But a lot of times, especially um, kind of what you were saying in that debate. Do you know what straw man is, Pete? No. Like the worst I'll, I'll example. Let, I'll let Echo explain it. In a nutshell, it's like the worst example of someone's side. It's usually like inaccurate. Oh. But um, I got it. Now I understand. But either way, like w when you talk about a competitor in jujitsu, and then the other side would be like, "Oh, uh, you you would never pull guard on the street." Which mm -hmm. is true, but then they're <laughs> representing that as like their that, position. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't true. say never. I well, wouldn't never it's say safer never. safer to pull yeah. donkey guard than full guard in the street. Yeah, and right. then even that, that's not necessarily true. Maybe for Jeff, and that's all. No, because if you jump full guard, you're going to land straight on the pavement. And, and, right. and to Henner's credit, he, he did say some things that, you know, I think the jiu-jitsu community wanted to hear him say. I asked him if he thought Jan, John Danaher was the number one dude in the world right now. What do you say? I'm like, because we all agree on that. Do you all, do you agree with that, or are you going to say you your say? grandpa? You know what I'm saying? What he was say? like, yeah, John Danaher's number one. I can't Whoa. deny that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, okay, do you think jujitsu guys who do tournaments can win street fights? And he was like, yes, I agree with that. Well, you, you know, know, I was like, cool. That's what I, that's yeah, all I was saying, dog. All. I was like, I don't disagree with anything he says. Though. Yeah, and see, and then the, so the conflict really comes when the the interchangeability of generalities versus specifics kind of goes on, Damn. and that's how so it goes. Going deeper, no, I mean, yeah, well, I understood that. And look, if someone could always say, generally speaking, if someone always could say all that, right. and then. When they go specific, they say, well, specific. That's great. A lot of specifics have no place in a general argument. That's great. So people don't understand that. That's so they get deep. this, this That's weird concept. Like, jujitsu coming like, out of freaking. That's pretty deep. Like, it's it's that. the way it works. You see it happening all the time. Write that down, Pete. Jeff, I Generalities are different than specifics. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, I always say I'm, the, I'm one of the worst people to introduce people to jujitsu because I'm like big and strong. And so it, if I, when I would like, introduce someone to jiu-jitsu they'd be like well that's just because you're big and strong Whoa. matter of fact to this day someone will be like well yeah good role you're really strong or you're big and strong or whatever and i'm always like yeah thanks man that's why i lift Hell yeah. <laughs> but, but, 
<laughs> but Jeff, I think you're like, I think you're the ultimate. I live too, but yeah. I think you're the ultimate person to introduce jujitsu yeah. to other people because you're, you are unassuming. And what made me think of that is, dude, I can't imagine the fool and how, how, how crappy it is when someone sees you and they're like, I'm going to talk some shit to this little skinny white kid right now. Oh, it happens. <laughs> you. Yeah. I've been a witness. <laughs> wait. Oh, no, I have <laughs> wait a second. Hold on. No, no, you got to watch I that. No, no, I, I, I know nothing. Aren't you Mexican, though? Uh, my dad is half Mexican, yeah, pretty much. So you are Mexican, <laughs> is yeah. it? Yeah. Well, my dad. My boy, you look like a white boy, man. The half he Spanish. He's like you. half white, half Cherokee Indian. So, but they would just say Mexican. Cause wait, your dad is half white and half Cherokee Indian. Yeah. Is your mom like my mom's the all whitest white. person ever? Yeah, she is, yeah. Because <laughs> damn. Yeah, I'm white. You were white. <laughs> Dude, it would look crazy when I'd be with my grandma. People would think she like kidnapped me. <laughs> <laughs> all Excuse right. Uh, ADCC. So speaking of which, I saw you up there this year. What did you think of everything? What was your impression? Number. One, let me start off by saying this. Yeah, it's great. Bro, when I went and saw you, when I was talking about going to see you at the ADCC trials, like that was literally in like a... What was it in like a hotel back yeah. room or something? Yeah, it was a like, hotel ballroom. Yeah, room. like a hotel ballroom. Work, Not a nice yeah. hotel either, but just like some shitty hotel. Yeah. And they put some mats on the floor. I thought it was nice. There's like 200 people watching, right? Less than that. Less than that. Yeah, right? just the people there. There was no way to be watching. Yeah, yeah, actually, it was just people competing, <laughs> and then pe- there's people competing, and then watching others compete. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one was crazy. It was epic. There was fifteen thousand people in a big damn stadium. Nice. And the jujitsu was just freaking nuts to watch. It was nuts to watch. What are you seeing in the evolution of jujitsu right now? Yeah, it's interesting, right? I have a very interesting perspective. I wish I could explain it. I wish I had the vocabulary to explain that. But like, it's it's. Remember when you first saw those first ADCC matches with the Sheik and they're like, and the boot, the drums and the Arab dudes playing drums in the background, and it's just so it was something so magical, you know? It was like being a kid again. It was like it was like all of a sudden, pro. Remember when you found out pro wrestling was fake? You know what I'm saying? You were so heartbroken. I was, and then I found Abu Dhabi and I was like, oh my god, it's not like pro wrestling's real again. It's real. You know, like they, like these dudes are real, real. Like Dean's a real fucking pro. Like like Macho Man is like you know that wanted that was like Dean Lister. Dean mm-hmm. Lister is like a real life Macho Man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just every every year it's always so special. You know, you could go back and watch ADCC 1996, an untrained eye, and watch that shit and be like, wow, that's fucking amazing. You know. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine somebody who just started jujitsu last year watching ADCC and being like, oh, what am I getting myself into? That was crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, am I going to be doing that? Like, whoa. It's just, yeah, it's, it's I don't know how, how people um, don't want to do it. What did you think about the evolution of the game? Um, like what it looks like now. It's a tough question. Mm-hmm. People ask that one. That's a tough one. I don't know. Like, has it really evolved? We're all just going for neck, arms, and legs. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You I know? was pleasantly surprised the last couple uh, matches in big tournaments I've been watching because, like, I'll be here and training and like, for this is, a, this is an example. Like, I'm freaking trying to pass Dean's guard, trying to pass uh, Wes's guard, whatever. We're tr- like Echo's guard, like we're. You spend a lot of time trying to pass guard. And man, sometimes I think, dude, I just suck at jujitsu now. I need to freaking, you know, like just find a new sport. Go start playing croquet or some shit, you know, like. Why, because you're bored or? No, because I suck. And I'm like, dude, I suck. And then we'll go and watch like at ADCC. I was like, I was watching, I was like, that's right. And I I'd realized this uh, uh, six months ago. I was like, oh, this is what jujitsu looks like more now. People are better, their guard is better, their leg attacks are better. You can't dive into stuff the way you could. Everyone's just better, so it takes more skill and more time to pass the guard. And as I watched all these matches, I'm like, yeah, this is it's just it's just a different game. Now, now there are evolutions that are happening right now that I'm seeing, like Pete, you were talking about them some the other night. Well, the other well, night we're trying the to do like, okay, so with the IBGF tournaments that that were before, well, they still have them now. It's, um, you don't have to be specifically too good at that many skills. You could be good at two or three positions and hold the person and win. 
But now at these tournaments, there's submission only, or Glover has his tenor tap system, there's mm -hmm. ADCC systems. You're getting penalized for just holding a guy in one position. Mm -hmm. So with no gi, you're not going to be able to hold anyone down when they're yep. sweaty. So what, what people are doing now is leaning on the person and making them carry the weight. And then... On the bottom, you're pretty That's much not changed. It's always been like yeah, that. I guess I, I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I guess, I'm yeah, finding where the changed. evolution's coming in. I'm okay, pretty much. I'm failing to find that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. Yeah, it's just like it's, it's no just different styles. Evolution. It's always going to look. What's old what's is so new, cool and what's this. new is old. Like look at these old Greek guys like Achilles and Zeus, and <laughs> like those dudes knew how to grapple. I guarantee you. Like who are you kidding? Didn't he come up with the Achilles lock? Yeah, all that stuff. You know? That makes sense. <laughs> they had, they had the wrist makes lock makes guy. Sense. They had all that stuff. So when did like, you get all freaking focused on wrist locks while we're going down this rabbit hole? Okay, so when I lived in Brazil, I lost to the, in the Worlds. It was like my fifth match, and then Oswaldo Alves there. He's an old guy, Andre Galvão. Just tell the story kind of faster. The weed is wearing off. <laughs> come on, Peter. So they're like, come live with details. us. And this, this old details. guy... Is the wrist lock master? Can I tell your story oh, for you? Stop. And then he taught me a couple wrist locks. And then when I hurt my back, I couldn't do arm bars anymore. Oh, so if okay. you grab the arm, you got to spin all the way around. Like Glover, you see when he grabs someone's arm, he's jumping around. I just, I focus on the wrist and elbow and I snap it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, I use it to pass the guard. You can see like Cade Rotolo, mm -hmm. he used a wrist lock against Mika Galvao. He starts snapping yeah, his wrist. You highlighted that. Yeah, Mika pulls wrist out, the and then he he starts coming around, circling, goes back to the center, goes again. Mika hides his wrist, gives him the pass, and he takes and then, the yeah. leg. And then he stuck his leg in exactly. And I only had these videos out for a couple years. Now, mind you, I came up wrist lock the world when I was living with Glover. We're sitting over there in National City over here, <laughs> working with you guys, and I was so pissed. I was like, "Fuck the world." I'm like, no, wrist lock the world. <laughs> like, wrist lock, Wu-Tang, like, 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 yeah. Glover's like, fuck you, Pete. Like, I need something like that. Come up with something like that for me. And then, like, it just took off. I, You know, I started um, WTW. It stands for a lot of things. PTG stands for pass the guard, pass the guac, you know, pass the guard. Pressure the guard. Pressure the guard, mm -hmm. pray to whomever you choose. There's a lot of things. And, uh, man, doing jiu-jitsu at Glover is fun. And I can honestly say, like, I, I didn't, I don't have, like, you had Bill or you had Dean. I had Carlson. He passed away. Mm -hmm. So it's like, my guy is gone. So thank God I end up in the best rooms with the best people that love jiu-jitsu. And lately I've been... Um, Somehow I ended up with the Rotolo brothers. I'm with them every day. We do this foundations training. And then we do like spears like this. And all this stuff is fixing them. But I get to be around them. So it's fixing me. And, and the guys are like living in Hawaii where I got hurt initially. And so it just, it's all coming full circle. And that's what's so cool about martial arts is it comes around full circle. Last time we were here, I don't even was there a Jocko podcast when we were here years ago? No, like I don't even know. This has only been around for about six years. Yeah. Seven, seven years. Seven, seven years, seven. yeah. Which so, is weird. So it just it's all coming full circle and I think the more you love jujitsu, the more it'll love you. And and Jeff and I have made how many videos? I made like I showed up to BJJ Fanatics, I made Wrist Lock the World. Danaher's the one that actually got me that job. Like I don't know him so well, but he gets a kick out of me. <laughs> and they call me up, Bernardo calls me up, and I show up there and I seen they had a Jeff Glover DVD in their own collection. It was, it was with like another company. Yeah. I forgot their name. I thought I thought Pete was full of shit. I was like, dude, Pete's full of shit. I'm like, Glover, what am I supposed to do here? I've been here Wait, like- full of shit about what? Just everything he said. I was like, <laughs> he, this dude just, he lies about all kinds of he shit. He always you know? thinks I'm a scammer <laughs> because like he scammy. hasn't met like, I'm Sicilian and Greek. He's used to like, Mexican, And then white. I met the owner of the he company. He never met me before. He thinks I'm a scammer. Wait, this is BJJ Fanatics. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when the guy, he was like, oh, yeah, just passively. He's like, yeah, Dean gets these blah, blah, blah checks every month. I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I'm like, Glover, get your ass over. He's like, like, fuck you, Pete. I'm not leaving San Diego. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to go out there. He's like, stupid go Boston. He's like, go to, it's go cold out there. He's like, it's cold out. I'm like, all right, Glover. And then I get on there and shit. And then Glover always, we always try to top each other. That's what's really cool. Like, so like. What we do is we hang out extremely a lot, and then we disband, and we try to like 
come up who can come up with more stuff. But I got hurt before him, so like, like the people that like it, they gotta really be into it to know me. They gotta pretty much be into it to know him. They don't even gotta be into it to know Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, like he's the one that probably like he's like the Scotty now. Mm. He's like ever. He's like. You know what I mean? Scotty was like that, like for this us as kids. But now you got like Joe Rogan, and we're all friends. Eddie Bravo. Eddie's our good friend. Like, shoot. Like, he does the other half guard, you know? He, what do they call him? The lockdown. So, like, Nemesis, yeah. Lover and Eddie, they're kind of like, they're from the same planet or something. I don't know, but. He's my other good buddy, and yeah. shoot, he gets a kick out of it. And we're all we're all connected. And Joe Rogan, hey, thanks a lot because every jitsu school in the world should thank that guy. For sure. Period. Right. Yeah, for sure. Spreading the word. And Joey Diaz, I gave him that class, changed his life. He put the video out, and um, shout out to him too, because he's um. Man, he knows everything about martial arts, believe it or not. He did kung fu and all that stuff. And I looked at him, I said, you know what? <laughs> you need to get on the mats, brother. And I talked to him at least once a week. Like, when my mom was on hospice, we call up Joey. He thinks he's really, he's like, yeah, I'm, this is your uncle from your mom's side. It's weird. It's like we're really related. And uh, cool dude. He loves Glover. I know everyone's uh, a <laughs> yes or no. Like, dude. These guys call me. Spit that shit, Pete. Look, when my Spit mom's sick. My mom just passed away a few weeks ago. Look, Eddie Bravo calls up every night, plays music for her. Crazy. That's awesome, crazy. Man. I mean, he's he calls me up. Uh, Do you guys remember the Eddie Bravo video that was Cribs? Uh, oh, yeah. That, I I'm, in, to, I'm in that video. I tried to find it. on. It's not on YouTube, but we got to get the access I got to it. that. I that got is it at like, home. It's called The Twister. I'm on the Easter egg. So if you like go up, oh, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, I show twister. up. Yeah, so it was on I that DVD. So that's why I have it. So I must have it, but I, I don't even have and a you DVD can, player anymore. Yeah, there's a way Um, you press like up, down, left, right. They're called Easter eggs. Scotty's mm -hmm. brother, Cade, who's like a computer genius. This guy put it in there. So when you put the little code in, then I pop up. And, and Eddie Bravo, yeah, he's... Shoot, just regular dude like us, and then next thing you know, he's he's another one. Like shoot, Ten Planet, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're nice to Glover and I. Like we've been to a, how many Ten Planet schools teaching seminars? I, there's a. It's one thing that's cool. Like uh, you know, back in the day, it seemed like there was more animosity, and maybe there still is, but between jujitsu schools and all that stuff. It seems like that's not so, it definitely, well, let me say it, it doesn't even seem, they're definitely not that as much of animosity as there used to be between, or maybe it's just between all the people we know. We're in their systems, you know? Yeah. Like they have moves named after Glover, they have wrist socks after me, I'm sure they have moves. When you're part of someone's system, there's no denying it, you know? Yeah. Like Glover's got like, they, they have like moves, and they have a system of moves, like they have like, how can you not be friends with it? You're in their system. Yeah. Jeez. Well, right on. So what? So, if guys are looking to follow you guys now, want to do a seminar, how do they get to do a Je uh, Jeff Glover seminar in their academy? I have the same booking agent that Dean has. It's a guy named Dave Herbert. So where do they go? Like, is it a Strikers website? Strikers International. It's a it's a it's a you know booking agency where he does uh, seminars for striking people and. Whatever, Dean came to my tournament, introduced me to the guy, bada bing, bada boom. He's booking all of our seminars for us and making it easy. So Strikers International on Instagram is the guy's page. and Or you could just contact me on Instagram, and we can book seminars and flat rate and all that stuff. And your and your Instagram is je, at Jeff, Jeff Glover BJJ. That's right. You guys are both, you already mentioned this, BJJ Fanatics, which is a compilation website of all the best guys in the world making videos instructional videos both you guys are on there we have a lot of content most of the people have a couple of videos jeff and i are there a lot like we have between the both of us we made probably 40 videos in the past like, year and a half and um i'm, I'm just, i just started working with strikers international too so you could contact them or you could find us dude remind me after this let's talk to the boys at bjj fanatics and put like a special on when this comes out you know what i'm saying so maybe people could buy like a like 10 of your videos or something in yeah, a package There's or something always like, like that. even if you buy one video, sure. every little bit helps. You know, Jeff and I actually taught, we taught a lot of classes. We, remember we taught the, we taught the Marines together and stuff. Yeah, Joel Hoffman, remember? 
uh-huh. Colonel Joel yeah, yeah, trained yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Took there's no out. discrimination. We're here to teach, you know, and if, if you're watching this years from now and Instagram maybe doesn't even exist, who knows? You can always find us, Pete the Greek, you know what I mean? Jiu Jitsu and Jeff Glover Jiu Jitsu and Jocko. You, you can find us if you want us. Echo you know too, I mean? don't leave Echo. Echo. Oh, he's a black got, belt. He's a black belt. Got all these guys, you know Pete, I mean? You're at Pete the Greek, wrist lock the world. Is that one big thing on Instagram? Is it that whole thing, or is it just it's Pete the Greek? That whole Greek? thing, Pete the There's some other the Pete, Pete the Greek, Greek guy that's kind of kind of fake. He's your your cool. BJJ school is called RioBJJ.com. Um, well, let's see, what's the in- and that's also where you can get T-shirts or whatever. It, just go to wristlocktheworld.com. I bought that oh, one. Okay. It, it brings you to everything. Um, on my Instagram. Wristlocktheworld.com. I put a I put a link tree so you can set up all your links. And like I said, if Instagram's not around in the future, you can always find us. You know, we do jujitsu. Wherever there's jujitsu, you'll find Glover in the Greek. Right on. And and the Rotolo brothers, I want to give a shout out to For them sure. because my mom just passed away. I was feeling down. Jeff all the way in Santa Barbara and, and these kids, like, I don't know, I have a good connection with them. And and they're about the only ones as cool as watching Glover as far as I'm concerned because most of the matches I fall asleep. And these guys, I get the, they're the only ones that remind me of Glover. They so. just go, man. I just want to add, I, when his mom died, I, I showed up. No, Glover's great. Made it sound like my I wasn't there, motherfucker. I was there for that. Okay. Well, was it Glover was in Santa Barbara. No, I came. I came to be with you. When well, that happened. Well, no, my mom looked at me. She goes, "I'm tired of Sam. Tired." Is anyone listening? Thinks I'm a bad friend. My mom's That's not big true. Mo. She's from Chicago. It's a good. And my grandma's Leona. From these are all like pizza people. My grandma's the first woman in Chicago to have a a, a restaurant, a business. So, uh, hey, shout out to Chi Town, dude. Chi Town. You know what I mean? Right on. Awesome. Echo, you got anything else? Oh, yeah, a couple things. Sandy oh, Beach, okay. that's real. Sandy, Sandy Beach, Beach is on Oahu, though, by the way. It's not mm-hmm. in Hilo. They might have no, they took me there. Like, yeah, we're yeah. going somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's hey, we're going to go. Oh, yeah. We're going to go uh, training. Oh, yeah, so it's very notorious for their, the shore break. Mm-hmm. You and Google people, break shore pound. Beach. Shore pound, yeah, sure, yeah, if you, you will. I'm saying in this scenario, it's probably appropriate to go yeah. straight shore pound. Oh, yeah, and it's super common for guys to get injured there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they, they post signs and all that stuff, but, you know. When, Pete with, the Greek ain't reading those signs. No the, way. Uh, when you're going with the boys. Yeah, the local guys, they don't. Yeah, so. Sense. You gotta watch out though for that. That it's notorious for that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. or, spe- or the short break. Yes, yeah, so built my watch, spirit. Watch out for uh, Sandy Beach spirit. Secondly, I think I figured out maybe five ten percent of your whole thing. Who Jeff Glover? Yep. Point out Jeff Jeff Glover. Please so inform us. You like you took the the original structure, if you will, of jujitsu, and you were like, oh wait, there's more stuff underneath the hood here. So you just like. You know how like, you ever buy like a remote control car and be like, okay, cool. And you take it apart and you see the motor and you see how everything works. You're like, okay, you take the original structure of jujitsu. And then when you roll, you sort of take it apart. Like you do stuff that you're not supposed Whoa. to do. You let them out. Just see what happens. See, let me take off this wheel. Is that reverse engineering? In a way, in a way, but more and more, it's like a, it's a form of experimentation. So it's like when you do that, you start to see little connections like, oh, this piece doesn't have to fit here. I dig it. It can fit like over here. I dig that. And the reason where one of the days that uh, you're teaching and I figured that out is you did this drill that I never been a part of before. You were like, okay, get into whatever position mount, right? And you'll be, and then you'll just call out another position or submission. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, get there as quick as you can. And (laughs) some people would be like, oh, I got to go here. Some people, they don't even know how to get there. They'll just sort of climb over and for which won't really work wow. but it's part of the the drill you wow. know it's and like find the shortest path there. i yes, was just gonna say exactly you know. right find the shortest path yeah. but wow. there's a test there's a test to see yeah. who stumbles through that one and mm-hmm. just you know yeah makes the 15 moves that could have been two but i felt it though because when you were like oh yeah mount you we're in mount and you said go to the knee bar and i was like I know the drill, so I'm not just going to just go to the knee bar like the way you kind of can't really do it. I got to go to another step first. So I go, okay, I go half guard, then the knee bar from, you know, Dean's knee bar or whatever. And I remember you watching and being like, kind of looking as if just like, kind of a little bit disgusted no no no. Oh. the opposite it was kind of approved oh. and not to say that that was such a great performance of the drill Humble it was brag. more like this is how i felt i don't know I, I couldn't read his mind i just read his look where it was like the way i felt at that time was like this is the purpose of this drill is to like don't think of it in terms of like oh i know what an arm bar is let me just go there it's more like figure out the quickest way 
and you'll probably figure out that there's quicker ways than how you do it when you really roll. Or there's actually ways to get there, even though it doesn't seem right there available at the time. See what I'm saying? And then so I started thinking back, and not to say I did this all in one day or nothing like that, but then if you think back to like a lot of your stuff, like you'll do a Darce choke choke when they're passing your guard. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh, that's not usually where they teach the darts no. choke, is it? It's usually from a very specific, you know, number of positions. And then you, if you look like at his match against um, this was in 2009. Uh, it was you, you went against Joel first and then Bill the Girl Cooper. I forget who, who you went with first. It was, a fr it was like yeah, one of the first Tino time. Martinez. I think that was the day yeah. too. Yeah, Darce choked no. that guy. Yeah. Mm. You know him? Yeah. yeah, he's a good dude. But it was a random tournament in Del Mar. Yep. Okay. That's and right. that was the first time I think I seen you in real life. Yeah. And I was watching you do stuff. I was like, wait, he's like doing a lot of creative stuff. Yeah, it's creative, but it's like you're violating a bunch of rules just so you can implement something that works, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then when it's a good demo, the, the best demonstration of that that I remember is you against Build the Girl when you guys were both doing it. God. Yeah. It we, really we closed out several oh, pro man. events where we were like in the finals against each other. Yeah. And it was like, this is my little brother, you know? And yeah. we, we would just like, Let's let's put on a sh dope show. Yes, yeah. it's going to be a fixed match, but it's going to be so cool that people don't mind watching a fixed match. Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was crazy. You know? It was really impressive. yeah, just like uh, it's like why I talk about like musicians and how a musician that's really like uh, Jimmy Page, you know, he played like as a studio musician for de for decades. Like as a as like a teenager, he was playing as a studio musician. Like play these exact notes at this exact time, and he so got so disciplined and so good that when he got to Led Zeppelin, he's like, "Oh, watch this! I'm gonna play a note here with a freaking violin thing, whatever that thing is called, and I'm gonna start playing a the guitar in a totally different way, and it's gonna work and it's gonna sound awesome." Mm -hmm. That's to me. That's like Jeff Glover on the Mats of Justice. Dang, I got compared to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did. Uh, oh, right on, fellas. Appreciate you guys coming down. I'm looking forward to taking class this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Thank you, boys. Thank you. We out. And with that, Jeff Glover and Pete the Greek have left the building. Yeah. Yes, Little jujitsu talk today. Yeah. Uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. from my perspective, mm -hmm. it was kind of interesting to be like last night thinking I was gonna do this podcast talking about jujitsu with Jeffy and Pete and it was kinda it's kinda it's a lot different, right? A lot of times I'm reading from a book yeah. or I'm you know, we're talking to someone that's been through some horrific things mm -hmm. and it's usually pretty heavy. Emotionally mm -hmm. heavy. Yeah. So it was kinda I, I must say it was yeah. kind of relaxing. Yeah, more lighthearted. To come in and just be like, oh, we're going to talk about jujitsu with with Jeff and Pete, who are both, you know, like super nice and chill. Yep. So there you go. Uh, jujitsu. Jujitsu. It was fun. So my, I came in this, the jujitsu scene in 2005, mm -hmm. and which was in Ooh. kind of the beginning of the height of, ju of Jeff Glover. Mm hmm. So I saw Bill the Grill, mm -hmm. Jeff Glover, mm -hmm. like these guys or whatever. So it is interesting to hear like his version of that timeline. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, that's when that's when I came on the scene. Grappler's Quest, yeah. Best of the West, oh, yeah. freaking the uh, w World Submission Grappling mm -hmm. Championships. It was like so Grappler's were, Quest. You were a little behind when there used to be. God, oh, there used to be some really interesting tournaments, good tournaments. But yeah, sounds like there's a there's a series of tournaments that the the tournaments you're talking came after. There was like what was that one? It was like the Olympics of grappling or something like this. Grappling games. Mm. Yeah. So I think that one faded by the time new there was a place in LA called Neutral Grounds. Yeah. That yeah. was old school back in the day. I mean, we're talking like there'd be fifty people there. Yeah. In a cage. Yeah. Like yeah. with the grappling matches we're in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> Dean Lister had a, a tournament or a match against a guy there, and Dean got him in some kind of hold, some kind of choke hold. But like a, oh no, Rico Rodriguez got this guy, but the guy didn't tap, and he like when the ref stopped it or whatever, the dude like didn't get up for a while. Yeah, like yeah. they were thinking this guy may not be alive. May not make it. Yeah, yeah there was some crazy stuff, but a little bit rogue. Back in those days. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how, how different it is now. It is. The popularity of jiu-jitsu is 
is awesome to see. Mm-hmm. And jujitsu is fun. Yes, sir. And that the way that Jeff Glover rolls makes it even more fun. Watching him roll yeah. make it fun. Yeah, he he's like the ideal of um like exploratory totally. jujitsu. And then what you gain, like when you or I mean him as the example, like what he has gained from exploring jujitsu in that way so much is that's what makes it so like you're not used to that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so it's it comes off as so amazing. And it's it, it's available to most people like that, but it's hard to like get in that mindset because he does it straight up during competitions. Yeah, like watch like Metamorist. I think it was like four. Yeah, the secret match. Oh yeah, when he, he took so he's off. the announcer yeah. by the way, and they're like a secret match, and it's Barry Yoshida, yeah. who just was in the Hall of Fame of ADCC yeah. by the way. Barry Yoshida versus somebody. It's a mm-hmm. secret, right? It's like a surprise, mm-hmm. and they're like Jeff Glover, the announcer, gets yeah. off, takes off his suit, and, and, and goes, goes rolls. Yeah. yeah. But, and boom, exploratory jujitsu, donkey guard, all this unorthodox <laughs> stuff. But it's like, it's by design, you know? Mm-hmm. And yep. it, it's interesting too, because they're like, they live um, kind of, for lack of a better term, like a jujitsu nomad style, yep. right? He's Where they go around, nomad. everyone knows them, He's they know like everybody. He's like Kung Fu walking the earth. Yeah, bro. It's crazy that for like five years at Victory MMA and Fitness, Look, we have Dean Lister teaching, like, which is insane just to think you can learn all this stuff from Dean Lister. Yep. But for five years, we had Dean Lister, which is as good as it's going to get, and Jeff Glover. Look, they're both here. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like every day was just it was crazy. Yeah. It was epic. One time so. I rolled with Jeff, and I rolled him many, many times. Mm-hmm. And so the, the thing I remember about, or the thing that, that makes this very memorable is this was the whole day I rolled with him like a bunch of times mm-hmm. where we're rolling, he's being all, he's keeping it playful or whatever. And then he switched and kept it real. Cause if you don't know, there's two, two modes, keeping it playful and keeping it real. Mm-hmm. That's Henry, he don't Gracie made mm-hmm. up those terms by the way, but he, he, he switches over to keeping it real and busts out some wrestling on me. Yeah. I re- and I, I don't mean on me because I'm so good. And so that's why I'm not saying that. I'm saying because I, I outweighed him by a lot and he just put it on me. Mm-hmm. Another notable thing is earlier. Okay, so I like Kimura, especially on smaller guys. He saw the Kimura coming. He gave me the Kimura and he reached behind his back yeah. and just held his arms as yeah. if to be like, I'm giving you this Kimura, but it's your job to finish it. Couldn't finish it. I was like, bro, see, that's the And it's not like I'm smaller than him. Where it's like I'm bigger, like the, the the chance of me finishing it is gonna be higher than you know maybe a smaller guy still does it, but that's that exploratory mm. process that's gonna allow him care. to understand all his available maneuver yeah. maneuvers when your hand is already behind your back. Uh, he has that we talked about it, but that level of confidence, like an insane level of confidence in jiu-jitsu. You know, when you watch Dean Lister with footlocks, he has that specifically with footlocks. Like he'll there's been tournaments where Dean would like stick his feet out, like go ahead. Please try and footlock me, but man, to Glover has that from a positional attitude. Like he doesn't care what position someone gets; he's gonna. Yeah. So, um, awesome stuff. Thanks for those guys for coming on. Uh, support the podcast. You want to support the podcast? You got to support yourself. Hopefully, you're gonna start training jujitsu. Yeah. We can't even start to. You can't even start to explain how much jujitsu is gonna help you in your life. It's true. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta say, listen. I, you gotta have faith in what we're saying, right? Because I can't explain it, Echo can't explain it. Mm-hmm. You gotta have a little bit of faith just to go try it, and my recommendation is you do jujitsu until you submit someone. Yeah, That's the, yeah. I made that, I did make that up, I'll take credit for it. You do jujitsu until you submit someone. Yeah. Once you submit someone, if you decide, oh, I don't like this, yeah. then you can move on. That's yeah. probably not gonna happen though. Because <laughs> once you submit somebody, you're like, it's like a drug, Yeah. right? Yeah. And you know what else is like a drug if you have the right attitude is getting submitted. Is like, damn, how'd that happen? Yeah. How'd that happen? You know, it's a, it's a, it can be a horrible thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, start training jujitsu. If you're gonna do jujitsu, you're gonna need to fuel that jujitsu. Get yourself some Jocko fuel, clean fuel, clean energy, good for you. Making stuff that's literally good for you. Uh, go to jockofuel.com. You can get these drinks. God, they're good. You can get these drinks. We, hey, if you tried the drinks like six months ago, the Jocko Go drinks, you may not have liked the taste. You might have been like, eh. But we, because of that, because that feedback, we reformulated the flavors, mm. and now they freaking taste delicious. Mm. 
So that's that. Mulk, you probably just are down with that one. If you're drinking right. mulk, you're drinking mulk. I mean, mulk is a savior to your to your body. Oh yeah, it's a savior to your body. It's gonna you you get that mulk hitter. It's also a mental savior because mm. you just got done eating a eating a, a wagyu ribeye. <laughs> sure, you know what I'm saying. Like this yeah, is yeah. top of top dog. Yep. Right. You yep. just get done eating a just a beautiful ribeye, even though it was delicious. Mm-hmm. You still get done. You want a little something sweet. Sure. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah. So that's why you got that milk train. Yep. Get on the milk. Oh, You're yeah. gonna be happy. So you can get the you can get the drinks at Wawa. You can get the protein, the ready to drink protein drinks at Wawa right now. We're making them as fast as we can. We're selling them way faster than we predicted. Uh, the the ready to drink milk. Hmm. So you can now go into Wawa. You can go into Vitamin Shop. You can just go. Oh, cool! I want a drink right now. Yeah. I need thirty grams of protein right now. I'm going catabolic. It's an emergency scenario. Death. Boom! Ready to drink. We're making them as fast as we can. And we'll we'll keep making them. So, Wawa Vitamin Shop, JockoFuel.com. Come and get it. Also, if you're doing jujitsu, you're gonna need a jujitsu gi. Gi, no gi. You might need a rash guard. We got some no gi shorts coming. We got all kinds of stuff. That's at OriginUSA.com. All the stuff's made in America. Hunt gear done out. Jeans. Boots. I mean, this is what you need to live. You need you need a gi, you need jujitsu shorts and rash guard. You need jeans. You need a t-shirt. You need a hoodie. We got you covered. Yeah. You need boots. We got you covered. OriginUSA.com. And this stuff is made in America, which is the critical, the critical part of this. Because there's companies out there right now that are going to try to sell you something. They got a brand, right? Yep. They got a brand. Making a brand. Oh, our brand is whatever. And what they do is they come up with some ideas and they design it and there's four people working there, seven people working there. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They they design it and then they order it from China. And then over in a sweatshop, some slave labor makes it, sends it to here. Mm-hmm. They sell it and they keep that money and they go, cool, we made money, let's do it again. Mm-hmm. That's not what we're doing. We're making it in America. So we do design it. But then we bring the designs to the factory, our factories here in Maine and North Carolina, and we make it. Americans make this stuff. And you'd think, oh, it must be seven times more expensive than the slave labor. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. And you're, you're investing in America. So originusa.com, go get some. Get, get whatever you need. Yeah, it's true. Also, Jocko's store. It's called Jocko's store. It's where you can get discipline equals freedom stuff, T-shirts and hats and hoodies, merch, if you will. A little bit better quality than just random merch, by the way. <laughs> also, we got the shirt locker, which is a new shirt, new shirt design every month. They're good. They're creative. They're fun. You know, some controversial. Yeah, there's been some controversial some, ones. Some okay. Controversy. But the ones I come up with seem to be more controversial in a way. Yeah. My specific designs. Yeah. Well, you're a controversially minded person from time to time. We'll say that. But, you know, overall, great, great feedback. Uh, check that out. Go to jockostore.com. You can look at everything. If you like something, hey, man, get something. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. You already know that. Don't forget about unraveling. Don't forget about the Warrior Kid podcast. I know I owe some. I'm sorry. Working on that latest Warrior Kid book. We'll get it to you. Jockounderground.com. We have that in case we get banned for whatever reason. Who knows? Maybe they don't like uh, people from Chicago named Pete the Greek, and they're like, hey, we're getting rid of this guy. So $8.18 a month if you want to get on board with that. We appreciate it. If you can't afford it, no big deal. Email assistance at jockounderground.com. We got a YouTube channel. Origin USA has a YouTube channel. We got Psychological Warfare. We got flipsidecanvas.com, Dakota Myers gig. We got a bunch of books. Only Cry for the Living by Holly McKay. All the books I've written, Final Spin, Leadership Strategy and Tactics, Field Manual, the kids' book. Get the, get the kids, you know, the kids' books. Please, please do that. Mikey and the Dragons, War, The Way of the Warrior Kid series. I have a company called Echelon Front. It's a leadership consultancy. We solve problems through leadership. So if you want to get involved in that, echelonfront.com. We have uh, live events. They sell out, so 
if you want to come go check out events there echelonfront.com or if you need long-term help go there put in the request and if you want to help service members active and retire you want to help their families you want to help the gold star families check out mark lee's mom mama lee she's got a charity organization if you want to donate or you want to get involved Go to America's Mighty Warriors.org if you want to help vets by getting them out into the wilderness so they can rediscover their soul. Go to heroesandhorses.org. And once again, if you want to follow Jeff and Pete, Pete is on Instagram at Pete the Greek Wrist Lock the World. He's also at wristlocktheworld.com. Uh, Jeff is on Instagram at Jeff Glover BJJ. And listen, both these guys have a bunch of instructional videos on BJJFanatics.com. And I know the guys from BJJFanatics.com, Bernardo and, and Michael, the guys that run it, the guys that own it. It's they're they're doing a great job of putting out great content. So check out videos if you if you want to check these guys out, if you want to learn from them, if you want to learn from anybody. You can go to bjjfanatics.com and you're probably gonna find that champion that you wanna learn from on there. So go check that out. If you wanna learn the basics of jiu-jitsu, there's basic videos on there. So check that out. Uh, as for us, and by us I mean Echo, Charles, and myself, we're also on this, the, the interwebs. We're on Twitter. I've been getting a little bit back into Twitter since it seems like it might be getting picked up by Elon Musk who may or may probably going to do a better job of not censoring people, which makes you kind of question the whole gig. Um, so Twitter, the gram, Facebook, we're on there. Echoes at Echo Charles. I'm at Jocko Willink. Of course, you got to watch out for that algorithm because it will catch you. And the reason I know it'll catch you is because what I cheat when I go in my ice bath. Mm-hmm. kind of cheat when I go in my ice bath. Oh. I will look at the Instagram or some some social media when I'm in there and time just goes by. You're like, mm. oh, it's been six minutes. How did that happen? Oh, because my brain was captured. Yeah, yeah. Sedated. So that's, that's a good term. rule of thumb. You can only look at social media when you're in some uncomfortable scenario. Like get into a wall squat. And as long as you can hold it, you can scroll. Yeah. You know, you get seven minutes, cool. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. Go, could you hang off a pull-up bar? No, because you need your hand to scroll. Maybe you could. What others? What's another crappy position to get in? Ice bath for sure. Yeah. Talking to you. But Ice yeah, bath. Yeah, you could sit there and have to talk to me. <laughs> you get a little frustrated today. What was the frustration about? <laughs> well, I wasn't frustrated today. No, no. I that was yesterday. Tell. No, you were roid raging. I wasn't roid raging today. That was yesterday, Hawaiian. Because oh, you because d- okay. you took it upon yourself to interrupt me in the morning. By the way, <laughs> in the middle of my workout with some nonsense. Do you res- but you responded during a workout? Yeah, that's true. Is right. that a good move? You think? No, no, nah, I I know now. Yeah, no, bad move, terrible. The what worst. was what was the trigger statement that I made? I don't know. I'd have to go through the, the thread, but there because there was a few, <laughs> multiple. <laughs> yep. Multiple, so I made multiple, multiple comments that violations. irritated you. Yeah, it's true. True story. Then you have to come here and sit here and talk to me Listen for to a here. long period of time. Yep. It's mental so I should have been scrolling social media during that set time. It, it's saying? mental anguish. Yep. <laughs> Check. All right. Well, watch out for that algorithm. Unless I'm, you know, verbally abusing you, then it could be a nice little escape. See, that's what you need. You need a little escape from my, uh, from my abusive mm-hmm. personality. You know, apparently. Yeah, the world makes sense. You going to train after this? Um, I don't know. Fifty fifty. I have another engagement that I. Okay. All I right. have. You knew we were doing this today. Yeah, I have my clothes and everything. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, hey, that's on, you know, <laughs> that's on the world, you know. I guess it's not your fault. See you your know. whole tone right now? Yeah. See? That's like, what. This, that's this, it? This is part of what I'm talking that's the about. Abuse. <laughs> it's, it's part of it. It's part of it. Yeah, it is. Yes. Check. All right. Well, once again, thanks to Jeff and Pete for coming down. Thanks for what you guys have done for jiu-jitsu. Always stoked to have you all around. And thanks for for helping so many people out by giving them the gift, and it is a gift, of jujitsu. So thanks, fellas. And I also want to thank our service members from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. We get to train jujitsu because you all protect us. And by the way, all of you, 
in the service if you get a chance, and actually you should make a chance, go find a way to train jujitsu. It's gonna help you in everything that you do. Same goes for the rest of our police and law enforcement and firefighters and paramedics, EMTs, dispatchers, correctional officers, border patrol, secret service, all first responders. Thanks for protecting us and keeping us safe so that we can live our lives. And same thing, guess what? Please, please go out and start training jujitsu if you don't already. It can save your life. And everyone else out there, guess what I'm gonna say? The same thing. If you're training jujitsu right now, cool, keep training. And if you're not, go find a jujitsu academy and go train jujitsu. And until next time, this is Echo and Jocko.